belongs to the nerds revolve alive what you say revolve alive every sunday at six bringing that gaming magic to your life doing it live on twitch to show that you don't want to miss be sure to subscribe crack yourself a brew if it work are you who now you can join the crew for the ride xbox mobile and hot topics around the nation to gaming rigs headsets hardware and playstation shout out to joe can't you see him glow token brother brought the flow now it's time for the show let's go What's going on, guys? Welcome to Revolver Live, the gaming podcast that says forget the past. The future belongs to the nerds. I'm the Beastly Gamer. Today, I'm joined by three amazingly cool co-hosts, the kings of podcasting and destiny alike. Do you replace us? No. 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 You know what? I I had to make some phone calls to close friends and family of you guys, and they verified that you guys are as cool as I actually believed. How you feeling this week, Briar Abbott? I'm doing very well, man. I, I hurt my back yesterday. Uh... I don't know how. That, I, I that, just got old. Rough sex, bro. That rough sex, man. So it's funny. I can sit down. I'm comfortable. I can stand up. I'm comfortable. It's the transition between the two that sets me <laughs> off for like five minutes. I'm like, oh! <laughs> you, you know, a, fu- a funny story, right? And it's, it's a part of getting old for me. Mm-hmm. You know, I got this futon here in the studio. And I, I hope you guys enjoyed the new the new location. I just turned the camera. But I got this futon in here. And I'll sit and play Destiny with my wife. We'll play for two or three hours. And when I get up, my fucking right thigh. It's in pain. It's numb and in pain at the same time somehow. And I do the craziest pimp walk for about yeah. 25 minutes to get the blood circulation. And man. It sucks getting old, but Yo, I, I feel like pain. It man. sucks sitting on a futon. That's the yeah. moral of that story. <laughs> you know, when I when I wanted to deck this room out, I was thinking of just getting a big sofa bed because yeah. it could it could kind of double as like a little spare bedroom, like if I had company e from out of state or something. Yeah, they like a sit, guest bedroom know. or something. Yeah. And yeah. so I was like, you know, a cheap alternative. Fuck it. I don't know who's coming. They can sleep on a damn futon. And, Fuck those and guys. It, I don't even want to sleep, sit in my house anyway. Yeah, I'm a well, futon. <laughs> you know, I got a cat bed, you know, put it outside and let him sleep. Wilson, what's Yo. going on, man? How you feeling this week, brother? I'm feeling good, man. I've uh, been working hard all week, so it's really nice to be home and relaxing. Started playing uh, Witcher 3 on PC. It's oh. amazing. It's uh-huh. awesome. I'm hooked. All the exploring and... All the chicks to bang in the game. I'm like, <laughs> That's the best part. You, you know, we gotta, we gotta add that new... Uh, that level of review, you know, what's the fucking like? Remember, we talked about this a couple weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, it's true. You know, it's whenever you like, when Mario yeah. Odyssey comes out, we need to ask, what's the fucking like? Right. Is Peach graphics. finally putting out on camera? Well, so what do you what do you score it on uh, graphics? Uh, like what what are my graphics settings at? No, no, no. like or... if you were to give it a zero out of ten, <clears throat> you go through all the all the different reviews. Number one is I'd give it a solid nine. Nine. <clears throat> nine all right. 10. Sound. Nine. Gameplay? Ten. Fun factor? Ten. What's the fucking like? Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> Even on console, turned it up, it's like an eleven. It turned it up to eleven. <laughs> oh, man. I got The Witcher 1 and 2 on PC. I bought the little Steam sale, and I need to actually uh, give them a try. I never even got into those games. Never. The Witcher 3 was my, you know, that was my very first time playing a CD Projekt Red game. And, yeah, it was amazing for the time I played it. But I like so many game. other games in, in my history, I've, I've, I've stepped away from it. I'm sorry, Final Fantasy 15. And I can, finally. I completely missed that game when it came out. 2015 huh? uh, because of destiny it wasn't until uh last winter that i started playing it a little at the new i have consistently gone back to it here now like once i'll jump in and even if i don't do any like real like story quests i'll do side quests and just have a ball yeah well i I can promise that there will be some point where i go into that game and play i don't know if it'll be a car accident where i'm debilitated and you know kate says hey look i'm leaving you but here's the witcher I don't know what's going to happen, but I'll definitely get around to playing. Yeah, I'll keep to... you company. Yeah, I mean, yeah, oh yeah. yeah wait, too, wait until you've got your PC because it's an infinitely super. That that game is one of those ones that it's just it plays so much better at sixty frames. The way the combat did is, you, it's... D- Wilson, yeah. did you ever try it on console, P- PS4? Yeah, yeah and, absolutely. And you notice a big difference. I felt like uh, I, 
think it was, it might have been Hitman that I was talking to about it a little bit ago. Um, we were doing a raid a little bit ago, and um, we were talking about The Witcher, and it felt like it started off good on console, and then some sort of update, like, halfway through the game, like, when I started playing it, like, just was, like, destroying the frame rate for me, and it was, mm. it was really bad, and I just gave up on it and then i got on steam and it's 20 bucks right now on steam with both the expansions oh god so well I like, maybe i should uh, use I that as my excuse as to why i stopped the frames just they weren't there for me and last but not least the most important and most thoughtful member of the revolver team my red yobo it's here but it's it's not a sentient <laughs> being so gary diaz will have to do gary how you doing this week man second fiddle to a yobo i know <laughs> Did you just pop Gandalf me with a... <laughs> Get fucking this wrecked, dude. Wrecked by a little bit, Gary. All right, look, look. Look, this is perfection. This doesn't need perfect lighting. It's already perfect. Okay? You know, I'm just son. waiting. I'm waiting for the DMCA letter to your house from Nintendo when they see that fake-ass copyright pirate piece of shit being advertised every week. <laughs> Every, Every week. goddamn week. It's just so good, Gary. What game I is mean, in that thing? Well, uh, Donkey Kong Country, man. Oh, so you got, you got you got a you got a shitty game on a weeks. shitty console. Oh no, you just <laughs> fucked up, Briar. Don't you you just on, fucked up. Don't you go there with Donkey Kong? <laughs> yeah, tell him, please. <laughs> no, I think I think the Yobo is better than two of our hosts now, Wilson. Because Briar <laughs> just fucked up. Dude, I better keep my mouth shut. That thing's gonna be replacing me next week. Shit, I need to, you know, I'm going on eBay. It might just be me and three Yobos next week. Fuck around with me if you want. When he introduced yeah. the three coolest uh, podcasters, he meant three Yobos. <laughs> I gotta, gotta get three, three slightly SLI. different colors. I think we should transition it into the Yo Yobo only episode next week, where we just talk about the Yobo. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to get one of those. I think I'm gonna have to order one just so I can talk about how it's, what a piece of shit it is in person. Yeah, I mean, with real look. experience. You should yeah. do a review on it on YouTube and just fucking I trash, trash it. it. Hey, look, man, just look, just let me tell you guys it. something, okay? And then then we'll let Gary, the the fifth member of the show, uh, talk. But after <laughs> I watch the reviews of this thing, everybody who's played with this thing loves it. You guys are watching, you know, you're 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 looking through a screen. When you actually have the craftsmanship in your hand and, and you feel how thick it is, it's like five pieces of toast in your hand. I okay? think you'll find those it's videos every... uh, are what the internet term clickbait. I don't know if you're familiar with the term. Listen, Yo, you can have play you with heard this the in a tornado, has... it won't fly out of your hand. Okay? The best kept secret in SNES retro gaming. Yeah. <laughs> Click here to find out more. Well, I need you on my team, Gary. You're fighting the wrong battle. You need to be you know, repping for the. You said that so eloquently. Say you know what? Want, you know what games have Gary? on the Super Nintendo? 60 frames huh. per second. Yeah. And on the fucking Yobo. It, does the Yobo right? support 60 frames? It probably yeah. has frame skip. <laughs> remember the option in emulators for it? frame skip? Remember skip that two, two frames. Mm. Let, let's stop disrespecting <laughs> one of our most important members, Gary Diaz. I, I, you know I that would... you'll never play second fiddle to a Yobo. You're close. You know, I, I get to actually feel the Yobo. I've never, you know, actually, I wish. But how's your week been going, my friend? We really missed you. And welcome to the show this week. How you doing, Gary? I'm doing well. It's been a good week, actually. It's been an expensive week. I've got a, a new fetish um, oh. that I found, and it's expensive and colorful. Um, I am into buying Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons. I said to myself... I'll never buy a colored Joy-Con. I've got my two grays. Oh, uh, colored? What you got against colored Joy-Cons? <laughs> yeah, nothing. If anything, I've had my eyes open. They say, like, once you go pink and green, you never go back. And <laughs> That's more it's like... true. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of where I've gone. No, I, got, I bought the pink and green Splatoon ones. <laughs> immediately got them. And this was like, this is the best shit I've ever had. It's the same stuff, but new content. Um, so I've now <laughs> bought the red and the blues. And I'm scouring eBay for the piss colored yellow. Um, which will complete my collection for now. Is it yeah. possible for third parties to make uh, icons? I would imagine so. I don't know it, if Nintendo puts stipulations out there that no one can, but I, I would imagine at some point. Uh, I think they would need to be licensed. So Power A make pro control, wired pro controllers uh, equivalent. So they've made like the Zelda one and the Mario one. Um, and you can get third parties that will dismantle your Joy-Con and put on a uh, like a custom shell. So it's just a plastic container yeah. effectively they put a new color on so you can get 3d printed ones because they um, are I'd... wireless even when you have them connected they're still wireless they are yeah yeah 
Because I, I would like one that has like a more normal size thumb. Length. Uh, and I wouldn't mind something with a little body underneath. Okay. Yeah, yeah, actually. I find that, fit, I find the, that the Joy-Cons the are comfortable when they're attached, mm -hmm. but they're not as comfortable as a full size. Mm -hmm. Got a little girth, you know, to hold on. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I feel like yeah, the Joy Cons. Get, get like, like me. I don't have like the most big hands, but like I feel like I'd be like trying to like work like chopsticks with those things. Like they're so small. Like they're, they're surprisingly comfortable, Wilson. Uh, when uh -huh. you put them on the little, uh, I don't know what it's called, the little grip that they go on, it does feel like a, a very slender traditional controller, kind of like something. In my mind, it goes to the what is the little Android control, the little device, the um, Ouya. Ooh, yeah. The way those controllers wow. looked in my mind is kind of the way that the Switch controller looks when you put it on the Switch grip. I would prefer, you know, some type of ends that go on there that actually conform to the shape of your hand as well, Briar. To me, that makes a lot of sense. Welcome, everybody, to Revolver Live. Revolver Live is a oh, gaming thank podcast. You, Beasley. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I'm so happy you're here. So having us, man. <laughs> We're all here. Sit, wait, wait, wait. Before we start, can I sit on the futon? Because I shotgun and called that. Yes. <laughs> Thank every you. you know what i got a, it's a long food time you know you can sit anywhere you want gary you get first dibs revolver live is a gaming podcast with six revolving topics you guys can be a part of the show like so many of our viewers are today today's show is actually dedicated to you and every topic was submitted by our viewers if you'd like to do that for a future episode submit your topics for consideration at revolver gamescast at gmail.com that's revolver gamescast at gmail.com we go live every sunday at six ish p.m. Eastern on twitch.tv forward slash Briar Rabbit. That's twitch.tv forward slash Briar Rabbit. The video's been shared on YouTube at Briar Rabbit's YouTube channel and my channel, Beastly Gamer. And if you're unable to see our live video on Twitch or the video formats on YouTube, check us out in podcast form on Podbean, iTunes, or your favorite podcast service provider. And with that, welcome, guys, to episode 14 of Revolver Live. 14. 14. Dozen. The legal age of consent in the... Dirty South. Absolutely. Dirty South. <laughs> and two years past the age of consent in the great state of Mexico. So think about that one. <laughs> you're, you're fully fledged. You're a full oh, fledged man. adult in Mexico. That's scary. That's scary. It's <laughs> fucked up. That's scary, Gary. It's, it's amazing the little facts you look up, Gary. You ever been to Mexico? Many, many, many times. <laughs> Makes sense now. So, guys, we got a great show lined up uh, for everybody today. We spent hours and hours uh, going mulling over these topics, and we went and got the best ones for you, and uh, we're really excited to present them. Uh, a lot of you guys have made comments in the past couple of weeks that you've submitted topics and they haven't been read. So we want you all to know that when you submit a topic, it will eventually come out. And whether or not we choose to do a show like this in the future or not, we will definitely continue to include you guys in Revolver Live. Who would like to get us started with today's topics? I'd like to caveat, unless it's a shit topic, in which case we won't read it. So make them good. Or maybe we'll oh, just we... read it to shame you publicly. Oh, that's, that's, that's another kind of Get show. on your game. I do that sometimes. You know, I just, well, like, to, guys... I just like to fuck with you. <laughs> did you guys, did you guys uh, check out like what's been going on with this whole Destiny 2 uh, seasons thing? Yeah, yeah, I did, man. And I got to tell you, even before we get started with like what all is in it, I was pleasantly surprised. Like, yeah. more is changing from season to season than what I really thought. Yep. So, like, I think you were kind of like with me originally. We just thought, like, the clan page was going to reset with, like, the little rewards that you get from all the stuff. Um, but it actually turns out it's a lot more than that. And before we get started, I know there's a lot of heated discussion right now about Endgame. <clears throat> this stream was not designed to address the end game they just wanted to talk about seasons and if they're putting this much effort forward to seasons it gives me a little bit of hope that we're going to have some change coming to end game and other things soon because they've already begun to make some changes based upon what they showed in this seasons thing i think um in the words of forrest gump i am not a smart man um and i watched the stream the, from start to end on on seasons um uh, you know deej and, and the uh, the other guys at the at the TwitchCon, talk about it, and I, I kind of understood parts of what they were saying and, and other things there. But I don't know, uh, Wilson, if you you've got um, a quicker mind than me and you can summarize what's happening with seasons because I heard there's some new armor coming and there's some new looks and some ornaments 
and maybe some new snowball fights or something. But <laughs> yeah, know, so like, like let's just get happened? to like the juicy stuff because like snowball fights and shit like that are cool, <clears throat> but that's not. I mean, I'm probably going to enjoy that for five minutes, or maybe it's when somebody people tra- come to play, yeah. Or maybe when somebody's trying to like snipe a crit on a fallen walker, I might beat you in the back of the head with a snowball and get a Ooh. laugh if it flinches you. That would be pretty funny, but yes. <laughs> that would be funny. Um, so basically, what's going on is they seem to have taken a lot of feedback from Iron Banner that we didn't really like the token system being our main way of getting loot. So they announced that. We're going to be able to purchase weapons with all those legendary shards that we've just been racking up that we can make it rain and get whatever weapons that we want. Um, They're going to do one more Iron Banner with the similar loot pool to the one we just had. Then next season, the armor will get ornaments on it, and they're not ornaments that you would get through, say, Everfirst. They said that there is going to be task-specific things that you need to go do in the game to unlock these ornaments. I believe one thing that he dropped was uh, maybe go flawless in Trials of Osiris. Maybe that's for the Trials gear. Maybe that's one of the perks in that. Um, I'm sorry, one of the quest steps in that. Um, There's going to be new weapons. I don't know if they're going to have new names, but they definitely said that they're going to be redoing the archetypes of the Iron Banner weapons, the Trials weapons. I was kind of talking to Tefty about it in his chat. We thought that they said something about PvP weapons as well. Um, they didn't say anything about Vanguard weapons. Um, there are more faction weapons to debut. They're going to do another faction rally. I, it'll be uh, different weapons this time. Um, I do believe in Seasons they also said that factions will get a new set of armor, uh, new shaders, things like that. And then there's a whole buttload of stuff to chase out of Bright Engrams. And a lot of people are complaining that it's through Eververse, but how many fucking Bright Engrams have you got? I bet I've gotten hundreds. Yeah. But this is separate to the DLC, right? This isn't DLC. This 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 isn't DLC. DLC. This is just nothing. None of this pertains to DLC, just seasons. They're not, this was not particularly addressing Endgame. Um, It may happen to coincide date wise with when the. DLC comes out. It may be okay. that the season season one ends and season two begins when the DLC comes out. But when we refer to seasons, we're not referring to DLC content, right? And did they exactly. did they give a a rough time? Have people worked out a rough timeline. What is this? Every three months, every six months that a season happens. Every we, they want to do four. They want to do four seasons to start. They want to try doing that. One of the, um, okay, one so... of the most exciting things about it too is that it's also going to be the mark of a weapon and sandbox change in in the game. So in the past in Destiny, when we've had a problem with the sandbox, there's never been like a, well, it'll be fixed, you know, by then or by when. It's always been, well, we complain about it and we complain about it and complain about it, and then two weeks before they're about to change it, we'll see it in the, the THWAB, the This Week at Bungie update. Now... They're, what they're promising is a sandbox update with each new season. So even if you don't like the meta that is currently exists in the Crucible or the sandbox that exists, you always know that it's going to be three months long until they, they give it another adjustment, which I actually think is really exciting. Yeah, so like, it. like it's there's like a little bit more. Like there's a whole boatload of stuff from Eververse. Um, so the current stuff that you can currently obtain from Eververse is part of season one. So your six shooter, your spicy ramen, your table flip, all those cool emotes, exotic ships. Yeah, sparrows. <clears throat> all those will be gone come season two. You won't be able to get them again. Ooh. But I think they said two weeks before the, the next season starts, you get, there's this, like, it's not really an event. It's like a buff that you get. Yeah, it'll be a where double XP. You earn double XP for two weeks, and then at weekly reset, you also get an XP boost for your first three levels because it's called well rested. And then you could like pair that with like some Pop Tart codes, dude, and you'll be just flying through. It's it's almost like Activision, the publisher, have said, you know, there's another game that we've got that has this double XP weekend thing. Maybe you could (laughs) try that out. Maybe that that seems to work pretty well for them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Trying to think of what else they said um, was coming with it. Um, 
So, I mean, like, it seems like it's going to be a lot more. Oh, the, so the rewards, this isn't really a big deal. But, like, so you look at your clan page now, and when you progress through the levels, you get a certain tiers of rewards or perks or bonuses that um, help you get loot when you're out and about in the PvE world or PvP. Um, they said those are going to change, too. Um, they showed off a um, bunch of new armor sets. Um, there was one that they actually had censored that they really couldn't show. And they said it's going to behave differently than the rest of the armor sets that are currently in the game. See, I saw those censored pixelated picks, and am I the only one here who thought that was just nudes? No, I definitely thought it was dicks. Yo, I just I wanted, was... I totally wanted, like, pixelated armor. I wanted to be walking around like this pixelated, like, 8-bit Eight guardian. Bit. <laughs> to me, it just looked Minecraft. like three very pale cocks that had been pixelated <laughs> there was sort of the same shape and things there i think it might have been deej's there was some blue in there like there was some sort of decorative ornamentation that was i think that was a piercing ring. yeah it was a piercing <laughs> we've deciphered it some photoshop wizards helped but we, he we got said no one would be able to decipher it but we did <laughs> we did and i've got to say <laughs> the cock ring i've got to say deej like a beer can just you know like a beer can <laughs> what the <Yeah>. fuck <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Revolver Live. So, so what I like about this, right, is like all throughout, it's like it, it's clear that they have been they've been listening to feedback. They didn't, you know, people gave them the feedback that they didn't like the way, you know, we use tokens to do everything. Like all the loot came from tokens. They're making changes to that. Iron Banner, you're going to be able to get specific items using money, and the tokens are going to be supplementary to that. Uh, and my guess is is that as we move forward, other systems will change to re reflect that as well. They tried out the token system. It wasn't popular. Raids, Trials of Osiris, uh, Faction Wars, those are all going to change uh, to reflect, you know, the unpopularity of that system. And I like that. And no, this didn't – This the seasons don't reflect endgame, but in a way they almost do because – with Iron Banner in particular, the way it used to work is you used to go and grind Iron Banner and you had a possibility, I think like three chances per character of getting anything out of the loot table. But mostly you were just looking for to get two weapons and two pieces of armor and had to wait till the next Iron Banner to complete the set. Uh, and I think in a way this does address Endgame to some point. Yeah, you're totally right. Um, they also got three more streams coming up in November. Yeah, that's probably um, going to be DLC related, right? You think so? I thought it would be, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I don't think it's going to be like seasons related. I think that's going to be more like sandbox, end game DLC potentially. Like, I think so, I, I think they're going to drop some so some good what stuff. What you're also. telling me then is on top of Iron Banner, mm -hmm. faction events. Um, random events like the dawning, which I heard is coming back, and some other bits and pieces. That's right. On on top of that, and on top of DLC, raids, trials. I've also got timed content that I've got to complete in three months before I lose it forever, and then it goes on to the next stuff. So there's a lot to do in Destiny 2. It looks like moving forward once they implement this this change. Having that yeah. three that month clock, I think, is actually kind of cool because it incentivizes you to get get the loot. Get, get that loot can. because it'll be gone forever, right? Like Iron Banner loot, there's a timer on. If you like that samurai themed Iron Banner loot, there's a clock on that loot. God, and once it's, so it's gone, <laughs> once it's gone, it's gone. They're moving on to the, like the next season of Iron Banner loot. Um, and I don't think that there's a chance of them being like Nintendo and re-releasing the same stuff. Well, at a later they did. Date. They did in Destiny One. Uh, they did kind of. A lot of the stuff that was kind of exclusive in year one, they brought back in year three. Uh, okay. So I, I hate to say it'll never be available again. You know, if they ever decides to do the season of nostalgia, it could all be available again. Season of nostalgia. Just <laughs> put know? everything in there. Yeah. But, you know, like the, the season is going to be themed. Every season is going to be themed. The dawning is going to be the theme of the next season, which is kind of like a win winter wonderland. Ooh, it's got, yeah. you mm -hmm. know, its own special armor that looks very similar to the dawning armor in Destiny 1. I'm really excited. It was a lot more than I thought seasons would be. Yeah, well, I'm excited. It sounds too. great. I didn't even know it was that that spread. The way you've explained it there to me has filled me with a lot of confidence that it'll be a game that I'll want to come back into at the start of a season and play for a good few weeks to get 
all of that stuff done regardless and then as content drops i'll be dipping straight back in yeah it sounds sounds really good you've 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 effectively sold me destiny so well done guys Probably it's about time we can finally you, return the favor to you, Gary. <laughs> you sold us Cheers. so many things. <laughs> I sold the salesman something. That's Good right. job, Briar. <laughs> Gary didn't sold me shit on Steam, and I'm not even a PC and player. It wasn't on just, Vita. Oh, this guy is so good. But I'm, I'm in the same boat as Gary. I had a really you know tumultuous week at work, and uh, I worked close to 60 hours, and so I, was, I didn't have time really to do much. And I knew I heard about seasons early in the week, and I was like, "What is it? I don't really don't have, don't have too much time." And I told you guys before the show that I was looking forward to you going in depth, and I really do appreciate uh, both of you explaining exactly what it is. And and like Gary, I'm I'm really excited. It's the only game I'm playing. It was a weird and, announcement too, Beastly, because like if you follow Bungie, like their Twitch channel, it wasn't on Bungie's Twitch channel. It was on Twitch's Twitch channel because TwitchCon is going on right now. And they had invited Bungie to talk, and this is what Bungie kind of came up with to talk about. And I think it really it invigorated a lot of people because, like Wilson was saying, I wasn't expecting much out of seasons, to be honest with you. I was expecting a you know, reset of some rep and, mm-hmm. you know. You know what's really funny, though, about – and we need to probably move on from Destiny 2. But uh, it's a really strange thing for me because I, I've seen online, and many people are very frustrated with Destiny 2, especially the end game. Yeah, I haven't I haven't really gotten frustrated with the game at all. It's so weird, uh, and maybe because I'm just now getting you know my second character leveled up. But to me, it's been something to do at all times. Every time I played it, you know, switching back and forth and going into the Crucible and running strikes, and it's just been a lot of fun. And it's really weird for me because I was so critical in the first game, so critical uh, to have turned around and almost done a 180. And I love it this much. It's really really fucked up, but. Continue on, gentlemen. Oh, no, I was just going to say, they have another... Uh, Hitman also pointed out and reminded me in chat that there's uh, another event coming up in a few days and somewhere over in Europe, there's some sort of convention that they're going to be speaking at, so they might be able to elaborate a little more on stuff. <clears throat> Dude, the new ghosts and the new ships and all that stuff look amazing. It's really cool that they're moving in that direction. And to be honest, like just from what they've addressed with Seasons has me happy that like they're they're... They hear us and they're listening and they want to evolve this game together. And like, I know a lot of people are getting really fed up that it's kind of a toxic place out there right now. But like, I mean, deep down, everybody really likes the game and just what's once wants what's what is best for the game. Just remember that if you're going to offer some criticism, do it constructively, man. Like mm-hmm. give it like you would want criticism given to you. You wouldn't want somebody jumping down your throat and stuff like that. So you know, just be patient. The game is very young, and they're going to be making changes to it. Like, I guarantee it. Just I be don't patient. Know, some, some people pay good money to have it jump down their throat. Um, but I on knew the topic it was of coming. Feedback, <laughs> on the topic of feedback, we've actually had a ton of great feedback. We will be revisiting Destiny several times throughout this podcast. Uh, I think unavoidably so. Um, but our first topic takes us far and away from Destiny. Um, you picked it up off of Discord, I believe, Wilson. Um do you want to introduce us to the topic that was uh, submitted by Hugo Rune, James Pratt, friend of the show? Yeah, so um, <clears throat> basic synopsis here is does success hamper uh, your progress um, by Hugo Rune. So does success hamper progress or creativity? If a developer creates an IP which is a resounding success, are they then restricted when it comes to future titles? Sequels walk a fine line between new idea and retaining that which made the original a hit. Can fan support dictate development? Take Borderlands, for example. After the flop of Battleborn, are devs back and backed into a corner now, or will they simply have to do Borderlands 3 next? Mm, wow, that's a great question. It is um, a good question. It's, uh, it's why we love, I love my little British bagel, Hugo. He just said what's <laughs> up in, 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 the, in the comments, too, so welcome to the, the live show. I've got to say, Hugo. first and foremost, Borderlands don't give a fuck about what you say. They're doing Project 1v1. You know, fuck the community. Have you heard that? That's that's yeah, big but like game. they they've kind of like backpedaled on that though. About like, I mean, I get it. Like they've said, like we we want to make things that we want to make, and like as like somewhat of an artist, dude, I can relate to that. Like, like I'm more productive when I'm told what I need to be done. But like, there's sometimes that it becomes monotonous, and I need to t- try something new and different and branch out. And I think that's very important. But you can't say, 
we want to do what we want to do and then turn around and say things like we want to give the fans what they want which they've said many mm-hmm. times we want to give the fans what they want and what everybody fucking wants is borderlands 3 yeah, sometimes totally. you catch lightning in a fucking bottle mm-hmm. and there's nothing you can do about it man like you're some actors get typecasted for the rest of their life they mm-hmm. do something really well and that's what they got to do and or, uh, it so, drives you know like bands that have to tour on their first album songs you know like they do oh. the next 30 years they're playing the same songs same even though they song. have 10 albums they're only everybody only wants to hear their early stuff you know yeah or like some musicians hate playing their hits you know what i mean like under a bridge by the chili peppers dude anthony Kiedis fucking hates that song you know foo fighters <laughs> learn to fly times. they they hate that song you know and it's some of their most popular ones but at the same time dude like there's an appetite that needs to be satiated and like, I definitely see it from both sides, but at the end of the day, you're here to make money and you're here to make a sustainable game that keeps people coming back. And that well, didn't do that. If we didn't a, have exactly to make my... money, you know, you, you wouldn't have to do this stuff. I, you know, like how many things do you do on the, during the course of a day that you do because you have to do it. Right. Like you just a have lot. to. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, if you didn't go take that piss, it'd be urine everywhere. L- it's not look. the stuff you're most excited about, you know, but it's the stuff that you just have to do. Yeah, totally. Like, I would love to, like, just when I go into the studio, I would love to just some of the, make some of the wackiest, craziest, outlandish stuff. But sometimes people want pieces that only cost 10 bucks. You know, they don't want an extravagant, you know, $250, $500 wholesale piece. You know what I mean? Like, you just got to give the people what they want, man. Like, and it, for, it for sucks. me, it, like, it falls into two tat- two categories. It's like true uh, creativity is something that is unbridled and it really can't be captured. In the video game world, you have some developers that stick with, you know, th- what made them successful for a majority of the time. But when they venture out and try other things, I'm thinking Rockstar, Naughty Dog, usually they see success because their creativity is pure create creativity and they found a way to bridge the, the gap between their creativity and what gamers want situation like what we're talking about here with uh with borderlands and battleborn borderlands like you said gary i don't know if it's unbridled creativity that made that game or a situation where it's lightning in a bottle uh the lightning in the bottle was evident to everyone who ever played borderlands but look what happened when they tried to use their own creativity to to in their mind, bridge the gap between their own imagination and what gamers want. They came out with with Battleborn, and it was a huge flop. And so in that situation, especially when you have investors and you have overhead and you have revenue to to generate, you have got to go with what made you a household name or success in the first place until you're able to sustain your next venture in creativity. So, yeah, I mean, if you ask me, the question is, is, does success hamper progress? and I'd have to say yes, because if you're successful, why change success? If you become successful, you need to continue to do what you did to get successful. You don't become successful and do a 180 it, and try other it things. It can you... so easily lead, lead to burnout. You know, like, you know, if you just, if you catch that lightning in a bottle and then you just repeat it and repeat it and repeat it. And I'm not even talking about the on, the, on the side of the fans who just, you know, continually want the same thing over and over again. But You're talking on the, about the, on the side yeah. of the creator, it's just like you just get burnt out of doing the same thing over and over again. It comes monotonous. And, yeah, I mean, yeah, and the monotony but, of it. But, but when you do something, there is room for, for growth in your creativity <laughs> if it's successful. Like, if we look at the original Grand Theft Autos compared to GTA V, they're, they're very similar, but there have been incremental changes that have made the game so much better over the years. And there are people who sit and stew in their own minds to figure out how can we add to this experience because people want to be able to play gta but they want something else added to it so if you make the same cardboard cutout every year every couple of years that monotony can drive you crazy but you've got to find a way to yeah, add something to the something story. like call of duty where they they started innovating and everybody's like no go back yeah ww2 yeah. is like the most popular fucking call well, of duty borderlands the, three the pre-sequel years. Yeah, Borderlands pre-sequel. No one, not in the majority of people, don't like that. They go back. It was to a different developer, too. though. That was one of the problems there. It was. It was just that gravity oxygen effect. If it wouldn't have had that, it wouldn't. Have, it would have been fine. But like, the point being, like, <laughs> there's a core 
there's a secret blend of herbs and spices that mm. make a good game and good You'd say Kentucky the fried chicken. Recipe. Yeah, I'd say about 11, <laughs> I think it is. Uh, but, but, like, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be told in the Borderlands universe, you know what I mean? Like, look at, um, what is that game coming out soon that's supposed to be the Destiny Killer, uh, the Anthem? Or, Anthem, yeah. Anthem? Looks, looks great. You know, it's a... Uh, it's, similar mechanics told in a different, you know, universe and stuff like that. And I think that's like a huge thing you can do too to avoid burnout. Um, but like I could totally understand, man. Like if I have like if someone orders, you know, a hundred, two hundred pieces that are the same one, come like sixty, I'm I am burnt out, dude. I'm ready to be working on something else. But you gotta fucking you gotta you, push through and do it's it, the man. Price, it's the price for success, guys. Like yeah. if you think Something we all do. We all go to restaurants, and there are places like Chick Fil A are known for their chicken. They don't say, "Hey, look, we're going to start making tacos." I mostly know them for being bigots. Oh well, that too. I think, <laughs> I think this depends. Um, if you take it into gaming and you look at gaming per se, I think the developers have very little say in what they do. If we're completely honest, um, mm-hmm. even the strong developers that you know have have uh, almost ten year relationships with the the publishers, even they are dictated to by their publisher. A developer will constantly want to innovate. A developer will drop a hit, and then they will want to go on to the next thing. And the publisher will quite often say to them, "No, you're not. You're doing the sequel, and you're doing it in 18 months, and that's what you want to do." Like you know, that's the pressure that's put onto a developer. A developer is an artist and a creative. Generally speaking, that to a sort of type of individual wants to pursue creativity and artistic endeavors. You know, whenever you read about uh, developers in the industry, they'll bounce off of a crunch when they ship a game. And they'll look at prototyping and exploring new games. Um, so take, um, I know you're a fan of, uh, of The Last of Us, uh, BC, like Druckmann um, and Bruce, uh, what was his name? Straley. Bruce Straley. When they bounced off of uh, Last of Us, they wanted to prototype and look at Last of Us 2 concepts, which was like years and years off. But the, the publishers, you know, the studio said to them, no, we need you to come onto Uncharted 4. It's Amy Henning's vision isn't right. You guys have to come on and work on this there. And those guys were then stuck on Uncharted 4 for an 18-month delay to get Uncharted 4 out. They didn't want to continue working on existing franchises. You know, you look at Neil, he'd written most of Uncharted 2. Mm-hmm. That's not what he wanted to be working on, but the publishers put them into that space. He wanted to be creative and work on new concepts. So I, th- I think in that space, it's you know you can't really say that it's a developer that's, that's stifled by success. It's more of a publisher, the, the person signing the checks. Yeah, person signing the checks and demanding uh, certain streams of revenue. And to be honest, at the end of the day, dude, an artist is never happy with what they're doing. I can be the first one to tell you. You could be super successful in the moment you got to do something that you don't want to do. You tend to throw a little bit of a fit about it. Trust me, (laughs) it happens. And it's understandable. I mean, it's their prerogative, but you got to make that money, dude. What's the next topic? Next okay. topic is, where does this content drought narrative come from? So this is a Destiny 2 topic, so we're going straight back into the fray. Uh, oh, we're yeah. hitting it head on. Uh, this is actually one submitted by our, um, our viewers, a gentleman called Nicholas Bertling. Um, he said that he doesn't understand where this narrative of content drought has come from in Destiny 2. He's finding things to do every single week. There's constant events, there's new features, fun mini games for him to explore. There hasn't seen a week gone by without something new he's found, even albeit minor. Um, Destiny 1, he remembers and recalls months and months of nothing to do, just waiting for news that something was going to happen. Um, and in his eyes, it's a golden age for Destiny, and he's a little bit upset to see the rest of the community saying that this game's dead, there's nothing to do, I'm just farming for in game, you know, bright Ingrams. What's our thoughts on that? Do we agree with his sentiment? Do we think maybe that we've jumped on a community negative bandwagon unnecessarily? Where, where, where are we sitting on this? I think he has every right to be frustrated with people tearing down a game that he's he having a he's good having time with. with. Yeah. You know what I mean? Not everyone is a fucking no-lifer like myself when a game comes out and sit here and sucks it dry like a succubus on the first day. Like, <laughs> oh, I need more! Oh. You know, like, I can't help myself. What are the... So I was like, I think I was up for like 32 hours or some stupid yeah, shit you, the first time. Fucking killed it. Uh, I'm, I'm in the same boat as Nick here, Nicholas Bertling. I um, I've been finding things to do, and for the last few days, especially this week, I haven't played every day. But you know, when the reset comes around, there's tons of stuff to do with each of our characters. 
and, and just, just go have fun. And, and to me, that's all I buy a game for is to have fun. And and some people want everything, the world, you know, complete in a game. But this is something that's not going to end anytime soon. Games like this, you know, they, they're released and there's ads to it. They continually add on to the exp experience and expand on it. And, and you can't expect a game that just came out to have everything included in it when you know that the plan is for Bungie to release incremental upgrades, DLC, can't now you, seasons. Can't you? Don't no. Most se aren't most sequels, like, bigger and better than the original? Well, how many, back. How, how many sequels do you know <laughs> that are like Destiny? There well, aren't I mean, any games like Destiny. So, I mean, to me, when I first played... I told you guys this when we first played the game. Uh, I played through it. I played... I got you know, to level 20 and I, I played for 20 years, 25 hours the first week. And when we came, I said, you know, I played through the entire game, the story, uh, I played the crucible, you know, I did some strikes and I had a good time and I played for many, many hours. And at that point I felt like the $60 is worth it. I sat next to my wife. We did this together. We enjoyed it. And the fact that they've been cont continually adding new things for us to do new crucible modes, I mean, do you know all this stuff is coming down the pipeline? To me, it's like patience is a virtue. Allow them to to create. You know, you don't I, want people to go I, ahead, I, Brian. I think there's a bunch of different factors that are kind of contributing to players being a little bit salty about this. One is there's definitely a lack of features when you compare it to uh, Rise of Iron in Destiny. And yes, that's the third year of Destiny One compared to the first year of Destiny Two, but uh, there were a lot of quality of life improvements that didn't get ported over to the new game. And like, you know, it's a, it's a service-based game. So people, you know, people who were playing that were a little shocked that, you know, wait, how can you not have private matches in this? How can you not have this? How can you not have that? When, you know, it took us two years to get them in destiny one. Also, I think there's burnout. Destiny two is a much better game. I think than destiny one in a lot of ways, but it's not so different that if you burnt out on destiny, that destiny two is going to be that revolutionary. Mm -hmm. that you're not going to, that burnout isn't going to hit you a little bit, you know, like for me, it was really refreshing to go from destiny to destiny Two, all new content, new raids, new strikes, new areas to explore new activities, but it definitely feels like destiny, destiny still, you know, like it's definitely destiny. Um, so I, I think there's a bunch of stuff. And obviously, like Wilson said, players burnt through it fucking fast, man. Uh, Bungie said yeah, themselves was, they were surprised how pe how fast people got up to max level. I was one yeah, of those people I was that, that Shit. you know, am experiencing a bit of burnout. But what keeps me coming back, the only weapons that I'm missing at this point is just a handful of raid weapons. Um, so the only thing that's really keeping me coming back is good times with friends. And, like, that's what got us through D1 in the first place. And I'm not... I'm not bragging, but like, in a sense, like I'm not a normal player. So like Beastly, you log in on Tuesday on reset. You've got your flashpoints to do. You've got your call to arms and crucible to mm -hmm. do. And then you've got your clan XP stuff to do. Trolls and all that stuff, yeah. Okay. How long does it take you to get those done on your characters? A couple days? No, no. Kate and I will do it in a day. Okay. Yeah, that's that's what I was gonna say too. So I'll on Tuesday I'll go through. It's already over. So you're waiting until next Tuesday. All of Tuesday. it out, but <laughs> trials of the nine and the raid now, on the now, first. Now, now that we have two characters that are you know two ninety eight light, um, it'll take us more than a day to do. So I mean that gives us a little bit more time and. Let's see, I'll knock all three characters out on Tuesday night when I get. Yeah, home. you're you're fucking hardcore, man. I mean, I love that about you. I just. I don't have the time for But, like, I <laughs> reap what I sow, you know yeah, what I mean? Like, yeah, I could gotcha. very much, like, contain myself and set a pace where I'm going to do one character tonight, one character the next night, one character the next night. Next thing I know, it's time for trials. It's time for, mm -hmm. you know, weekend activities, things like that. But I choose to burn through it, and I reap what I sow because of it. Yeah, I think but, it's a good a good opportunity go to, to pimp out um, actually a site that, that I directed prior to this week. Oh my I've god, found it's so good. Someone else told me. I actually I'm gonna call you out, Wilson. You say you've only got a couple of weapons left to get. Okay. I bet you you haven't. There's a website that we found called destinysets.com. Destiny S E T S dot com. One one okay. word. Um if you check that, that out. Go to it? 
Yeah, check it out. I'd encourage the viewers to check it out. Log into it. And it's got a checklist of every single legendary and exotic piece of armor and weapon in-game, where you get it from. And then it's got a little tick box next to it if you've achieved it or not, if you currently own that item or not. And you'd be surprised at how much more incentivized you'll be to put little green ticks in every single box um, on there. I didn't realize there was so much that I was missing in Destiny. And there's a huge amount of content in there that's still available for people. If you're a completionist and you want to go through and get armor sets and things that are on there. And also, this is a great website because you can click through and look at the, the item stats and think, is this a weapon I want to go for? Is this something that's got stats that I think would find interesting to me? If so, okay, I get this from IO. So I'm going to go and grind public events on IO and I'm going to turn in and try to get this weapon that I'm missing. Yeah. And this is something that's... Mm, yeah. I'm Sorry, pretty much only missing like, motivating. I'm only missing like four things. Everything else I can't get right now. Holy like shit, the weapons that everything. are in the faction. <laughs> like I'm missing two... I'm missing an, two... What is it? The Hunter Dragon chest piece, the Titan Sojin, Chojin Jetman boots, the the little Jetman boots, the Rocket Man ones, and then like pretty much, I don't really run strikes for Vanguard tokens because it's not really worth it. The sniper's Garbo anyway. I don't really want that. I just pretty much want the raid sniper. Like yeah, I'm missing one, two, three raid weapons, um, and then the rest of the stuff is stuff that you can't get from the factions because they haven't released them yet. Oh wow, this is an awesome website. You guys need to check this out. After yeah. the show, my it's goodness, cool. DestinySets.com. Yeah, really cool. Like me, I'm not, not really even about the armor. weapons. That, that's for me. It is about the armor. I want to get those armor sets, mm-hmm. man. Some of them look so good, uh, and being able so, to yeah, click on them, they do. But like, they just there's no. I really think they missed an opportunity with random rolls on armor. I, like, I think they missed why an opportunity why with does, mods. Yeah, mods, but like, I mean, armor in itself, why does every set of Crucible armor for Hunter have to be mobility when mobility does nothing? Because that's like, why they want to... be listening, don't spec mobility. It's all about recovery in this game. Hunters are all over this problem, but that's how they've decided to distinguish the different classes, right? Is that the the Hunters have high mobility, the, the they don't. Warlocks have... What's that? They don't. don't. It doesn't. Mobility affects your your walking speed. No, I understand your, your problem. No, I totally understand your problem <sighs> okay. with, the, with the stat itself. But the the stat is there. They have high mobility, right? The, right. They have okay. a high yeah, mobility yeah, yeah, yeah. stat. Gotcha. The warlocks have a high recovery stat, and the uh, the titans have high. Uh, what is the third one called? Resilience. Resilience stats. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can try to piece together armor that kind of breaks you from that mold. But for the most part, they keep you to that mold. Um, and the, the mobility stack gets a lot of flack because it doesn't increase your sprint speed. But it does have tangible benefits. Like, there are tangible benefits. In a gunfight, when you're you're fighting a high-mobility hunter, you can see them strafing left and right faster than most characters do. And they are harder to hit. You know, that that's a fact. You've seen that yeah. hunter that it's just fucking hard to kill because he's bouncing all over the place and he's he's you know, he's around that corner and up in the air and behind that box faster than you can even shoot at him. Like well, the, I'll agree with like the strafing gunfight, but like it's not gonna help your initial jump height. It's not gonna I mean it's not gonna help you get to anywhere quicker, in my opinion. But like when someone's strafing like that on him, all you gotta do is land one good shot with something with high caliber rounds and you get the chance of flinching them. You know what I mean? Like that's, yeah. that's the big thing right now. I would like to see it's if, RNG. If, if it, uh, if it increased your sprint speed, that's the only change I'd like to see to it. It's just an increase to sprint speed and not a huge one. Right. Cause then it, right. I think it would legitimately be overpowered. Um, For sure. It needs to be very minute, like, but it should, it should one be mobility to 10. Yeah. should be my new it should be a very gradual arc there it shouldn't just whap, you know and like all of a sudden you're fucking faster than d1 skating titans you know what i mean like yeah and there'd be no reason to run anything else so on the topic of the the world's slowest quick fire um we're gonna transition <laughs> to the next quick fire topic after <laughs> 20 minutes of debate on, on one of them uh, this one's the the... <laughs> exactly shoot sorry, from the i think this one's gonna <laughs> tap right into uh to an itch that you can scratch, basically. This one's around biggest gaming disappointments. This was a suggestion by Paul Gifford, who said, given the Twitter rage on D2's apparent state, which I guess 
and many people are seeing as a big game in disappointment, rightly or wrongly. We've just spoken about that there. Um, he wanted to, to ask us what ours were for him. It was the order 1886, which is why I <laughs> ask you, BC, because uh. I know you're a fan of it. He describes that as the hot girl <laughs> in college who is beautiful and fun to look at for maybe an hour or two over lunch, but expensive, hollow, and absolutely uninteresting. So, perfect. you know, Paul, tell us perfect. how you really feel. Paul, <laughs> tell us how you really feel about her. That's a um, perfect description of that game. True. BC, eight, older 1886, uh, biggest disappointment for him. You loved it. Why? And what was your disappointment then? I didn't fucking love that game. You know you what? You did. No, I didn't. Uh, watch my review. I, you know, I, I said at the end of my review that I would recommend it, but upon reflection of my review, and I've said it since then, I've said it on the show, that I didn't like the game. It, I, you know, looking back at it, I, I actually went back and played portions of the game again, and it was just very hollow. It was a very hollow experience, and a, a beautiful exterior with nothing on the inside, and and that's how I felt about the game. But that's not that's kind of dated, and I think that a lot of people are disappointed in that game for many, many reasons. A God, game I was that, hyped for that game. I was so hyped. I was too, man. I was really hyped. Uh, for that game, but you know, time has come and gone, and, and there have been other disappointments. And I could think of two, two games in the recent year and a half that have disappointed me tremendously. One would be Friday the Thirteenth. Now I know what? I'm probably going to get, I, I know I'm probably going to get crucified in the comments. Uh, Friday the Thirteenth for me started out as, you know, I'm a, I'm a horror fan. Sorry, Gary, and uh, you know, I I always thought that the the idea of being Jason and chasing people around and and murdering them or getting away from Jason would be very, very fun. And initially it felt that way, but upon much more reflection of the game uh, and, and seeing how uneven, you know, it was being a counselor versus Jason and how basically you had to jump through 25 hoops to survive as a counselor and basically killing Jason was virtually impossible. And Jason was incredibly overpowered. And the, the fact remains that there's very little to the gameplay itself. Uh, and so I played that game for probably a month, month and a half sporadically until it really dawned on me how one-sided the gameplay was. That game that was, was fun until people figured out how to play it correctly. That's just <laughs> it, though. You got to play it with friends. <laughs> you got to play it with friends, dude. If you're playing it with people online, like, dude, like, you guys have seen me. Like, sometimes I get I get a little, uh, little competitive online. I really want to win sometimes. So when I'm playing against randoms, dude, I'm getting super competitive. When I'm playing against friends, I'm going for fun factor. I'm going, if I attempt to go after this guy, I could completely derp, and then everyone will laugh at my expense. So it's yeah, worth that, that's, it. Yeah, that's an experience. <laughs> and honestly, guys, we need to do that more. We used to play a lot more mm -hmm. games together as a revolver crew, and it's happening less Ooh, and less. I, less I, I'm I kept... sick of this shit. I but, keep uh, asking you to buy Primal Carnage and I'll play it with you, but you know, every time I ask, you tell me I'm not playing that dinosaur shit. No, <laughs> no. we need to have we need to have like a drinking time. revolver night, and I know Ooh. Tuesday night would be would be hard for some people to drink or whatever. But we need to do like some fun shit, like Cards Against Humanity and yeah, Friday night. night. Yeah, that's Friday something on a schedule, work, baby. I'll drink whenever. Yeah. Have a couple of drinks, do some mm. dumb shit online. That's right. But Beasley's having second thoughts here. <laughs> I don't want to fucking drink, okay? You don't got to drink. You need to be I'm silly. done I'm with just, that shit. You just got to deal with us. I'm, <laughs> drinking. A black man drink, I'm a black man drinking in the hood. Ain't nothing good going to happen with that shit. Heard that. I hear you. Yeah, word life, son. <laughs> Can relate. But, but, but uh, uh, for just getting back on topic here, rapid fire, remember, we got to... Um, it was No Man's Sky for me. Shocker. Who? Sorry if I took somebody else's fucking No Man's Lie. It's a good game. Me and Briar are gonna. It's a good game one. now, dude. But you don't understand, dude. Like when something burns your ass. If yeah. I sit down and there's a hot coal on my chair and my ass is burnt, I'm not gonna sit back down in that chair. I'm not gonna go. Oh, that. It, last time, you know, things have changed since I sat. No, fuck that chair. It's going out the window. It's so right, man. And Respect. I'm done with it. Respect, Wilson. With that Respect. being said. I should go back and give it a second look. <laughs> You're asking, you know what? That, it Maybe I'm a masochist. Over. Mm. You know, I don't you know. Got, got a nice I'll tell you, Wilson. Scar on your ass. You're ready to get burnt again. That game, I mean, they made promise upon promise about what was going to be that game, and a lot of that shit wasn't there. But the hype for that game was just too fucking high. Like, if the yeah. developers of that game had stayed off of the talk you know, the talk shows and yeah, talk hadn't shows made and all those promises, what they actually delivered, I had a lot of fun with. At launch, I had a lot of fun with. I know that 
the hate for that game is fucking super real for people. I'm not gonna lie to you. I had fun with that game. <laughs> I had fun too, it's... but like I feel like my I was taken advantage of. I yeah, felt like I, I was like I was dope sick from Destiny. I needed I needed something that I couldn't get, and No Man's Sky is like, hey, I got this. Y'all want some No Man's Sky? It's this new stuff. And I'm like, yeah, man. Like I'm so down for the ride, and then no it was Man's a bad Sky trip. As Destiny trip. method, it was like Destiny methadone. That's what you treated <laughs> oh, No Man's Jesus. Sky. As. That's exactly what it was for him, Gary. Uh, a quick honorable mention. For me, was quantum rapid break fire, P. Sweet. I just honorable mention. God damn it! That's all I want to say. <laughs> quantum break on the mine. Xbox One was a huge letdown. Right, yeah, I really wanted it to be good. I'm gonna drop mine, and, and literally, this is gonna be like a, a penis slap to the face of of any Sony fan. Bloodborne, fucking Bloodborne. Oh, like, kiss my ass! You must no. be tripping. I've I've heard from so many people. I played Dark Souls three, which was the first Dark Souls I really got into and enjoyed. And everyone told me, "Oh, if you like if you like Dark Souls, play Bloodborne. Bloodborne's the the best Dark Souls thing." I got into the first town. My frames hit fifteen. I turned it off and never played it again. (laughs) It is a glaring problem for that game. Everything else about that game I fucking love, but man, and it'll be at the most random times too. Gary, it's like you're not even you're not even in like a place that you think would do it there's this one section early in the game where you walk across a bridge and it's like dude <laughs> oh my god i, I distinctly <laughs> remember the, the bit i turned it off i did the the first part where you're in like the mausoleum or you get resurrected whatever and then you get into a town you climb up a bridge you go down an alleyway into a sewer and you go up a rope ladder and the rope ladder was like it must have been 15 frames i didn't have a frame counter but it was awful and it had been stuttering and jumping all the way to there the guy looked like a scarecrow i didn't really like the animation of him i just nothing grabbed me and obviously uh, see, i gave it like you know everything else about that game gary i fucking love i love the, the themes amazing. i love the setting i love everything about that game except that frame rate was fucking awful like awful. You know it, needs. Was amazing, it needed the man. pc release it never it's only on it yeah. never got yeah. a yeah yeah, if it had gotten a PC release, it would. I think it'd, it'd be one of my favorite games. Of all they time. should remake it HD. Work around whatever fucking legalities they have to, so that it they, it's not a Sony exclusive. It's one of the few games that doesn't get any help from being on the pro mode of uh, nope. PlayStation yeah. 4 too. It's like you figured that would be one of the first ones that they would oh. go back and be like, Boost "This mode. game needs a fucking uh, a facelift or a you know, yeah, well, this house makeover." The boost mode didn't affect the frame rate or right. anything resolution, so that wasn't changed at all. And to be totally honest, I'm a console peasant. So during the time when I first played Bloodborne, I didn't really notice all these glaring issues until after it was, you know, exposed to the world that these these frame rate hiccups were happening. And then I started to notice it. But before that, I played through the game and I had 70 hours of absolute bliss playing that game. I, I wish the frame rate was better. Gary, I swear to God, if it was, you would have loved that game, man. You Probably would have, but for that reason, it's my biggest disappointment. You got, right. yeah, got, you got gonna... birthed on the ass. Like, listen, right. I got you, man. I, oh, I was definitely really looking forward to the Order 8086. I bought the fucking collector's <gasps> wow. edition with the statue. I mean, I was really looking forward to this, but not nearly as much as I was looking forward to the Division. Oh, Um, I mean, from the day we first saw the division at E3 and they were talking about how it'd be cooperative and it'd be tactical and there'd be loot collection. Like from the moment that game got released, we started talking about that beastly way back when years ago, years ago. And anytime somebody would ask me what the most anticipated game coming out was, was, it it was that game. Mm -hmm. That game came out and it was fucking boring. I mean, it had you all tried, these systems. Bro. You really did try. Bro. It had all these systems. I loved the beta because the beta didn't give me enough time to realize, oh, this game's boring. <laughs> Do you think that was part of the problem, though, that the beta kind of did give us a little bit of a taste of what was to offer other than the <clears throat> excursions? So the pro- the biggest problem I had with the game in the beta was that every character or every enemy felt like a bullet sponge, and I assumed yep. that once... Once we got into the game and we got powered up, that would change, right? It didn't change. And it that's true about Destiny, too, is that characters are bullet sponges, but I could forgive it more in my mind because they're aliens. And, okay, one bullet to the head isn't going to kill an alien because it's fucking space magic. Space magic. Mm-hmm. But when I was fighting just some random dude in the street 
and I'd unload <laughs> clip after clip of fucking sniper rifle ammo into this dude's dome. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, what That's the some... fuck? Like, is this Valus to Arc Year One? Did this guy fuck a cabal? What is this? Like, like the game like some... was just was some... boring. There was some Luke Cage. Back, Luke Cage looking motherfuckers as well. There was just some like guys in hoodies. Yeah. They're just like taking rounds to their like fleeced hoodies. Yeah. What kind like, of hoodie nothing. is that, man? Like, Get is that, that, baby? The, the, DC? The, dark, <laughs> the Dark Zone did, was still fun because of the shenanigans you could pull in that. But ultimately, I just couldn't force myself to play to level up my character <laughs> because I was just so bored doing like the random missions that you have to do just to progress in that game. It was really disappointing. And Later on, when they released the survival mode, like I had a blast with the survival mode because they took all the boring shit out and yeah. replaced it with l really high octane excitement. And all the systems that were in place for that game stood up once they, you know, they changed up a couple of things about it. But I still have high hopes for the Division Two. But the Division is probably the most disappointed I've been in a game in a long time. I put I about two hundred hours. I put about two hundred hours into the Division according to you play. Uh, on the launcher and actually a lot of the gripes you have are around the bullet sponges actually dissipate um, once you get good gear and you can shred people in half a clip it does feel a lot better however that being said you're still right you never get away from the fact that it's just a boring gameplay loop even with the set armors and the unique ways to play yeah there's only so many different m16s you can hold or ak for it's that it's just it's human guns the guns that you could walk into walmart in the america in america i guess and buy like do you know what i mean like you can't buy m16s exotic. at walmart it'd be a lot yes, cooler you if you could no <laughs> it's, it's not you like buy a, Gala, it's not at Kroger. a galahorn or a thorn or a last word or this kind of like mystic exotic weapon it's still some guy in a hoodie and a variant of an ak or a scar that i'm going to shoot him with it's it's very difficult to want that loot, you know, if it's just another another real world gun. So yeah, you, I think you the, hit the nail on the head. I had a blast in the beta, dude. Me and my friends, man, we would just run servers and fuck people up, dude. And we'd yeah, have like darkness, the whole yeah. server <clears throat> they'd have us all cornered on top of the library roof and in the beta you couldn't like get to that far back alley to like flank us. And we'd just be running servers, man. And I think I put just as much time into the beta as I did to the actual game. I mean, hundreds of hours into wow. the beta, dude. Yeah. Like, it was it was up there. But I feel like the best thing that ever came out of the Division for me personally was that before I met and hung out with Briar, he killed one of my best friends in the Dark Zone. Rip Mustard, <laughs> Rip mustard Tiger 3D. We love you, buddy. Here's, yeah. That's how Briar makes friends. <laughs> You know, that's how Briar makes friends, Wilson. He'll come and kill your friend and look at you and say, hey, you look like you need a friend. That's what he put him on YouTube, too. My buddy saw that he was down, got him up. They started running around, and Briar started looking around. And he was like, g -g 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 just mowed him down and then put it on a YouTube video, and it was glorious. <laughs> I log in the next day, and my buddy Mustard's like, yo, man, I ran into your boy, Briar Rabbit. <laughs> Fucking murdered me in the dark zone. It was pretty funny, actually. He wasn't salty about it. He thought it was fucking hilarious. Oh, Briar, you make a hell of an impression. <laughs> Just taking people out. up for no reason. This guy looks like the next victim. It was like a year I later or two years later when we found that I actually did make a YouTube video out of that. <laughs> oh, Briar, you're such a sadist. All right, so the next topic comes from our longtime viewer. He's been viewing us for at least 14 episodes. Super Dan, who asked... Is Destiny 2 PC the savior we hope it is? He says, is Destiny 2 PC going to be the answer to many or all of the current gripes people have with the game? Should we expect it to be? Is it fair that console players should be subjected to the inferior version when they supported the game from the outset? <laughs> this is I, our think, last I think it's Destiny going... Topic. Yeah, this is our last Destiny topic, by the way. I think that it's going to solve some issues. Um, you know, more frames obviously allow you more room to either hit or miss your shots, depending. Mm -hmm. um, frame rate is just, like, it's much smoother on the eyes. It makes weapons that... I Maybe it's not just the frame rate, but, like, dude, hand cannons were balling yeah. on, the, on the PC beta. You know, a lot of weapons that weren't didn't really feel that good on console felt great on PC. And I don't know if that's a mix of like frame rate and like PC magic <clears throat> and stuff that I don't understand, but it's not going to fix the end game. 
You know, mm -hmm. like it's not going to fix the way people go about getting loot. It's going to be the same thing. It's just that weapons are going to feel a little bit different. There's going to be a different meta. And it's an excuse for people to to grind it all over again. Do I think it's unfair that console players, quote unquote, get left in the dust, man? As long as you're having fun and you're with your you're at the place where your original friends were, that's all that matters. Like people on PC are also supporting Bungie. You know what I mean? Like it, it's it's universal support all around. And we're in this shit together, man. So let's fucking get along. Right. We can do this. Here's the thing about when we played the PC beta. And it's something that people don't talk about a lot, I think, because they don't want to make console f players feel bad about the game that they love. But the PC beta, and it's not related to frame rate or graphic quality, it just felt better. Mm. There was something about the way the game controlled uh, on, on mouse and keyboard, but also on controller that felt better. It felt more like Destiny 1 than Destiny 2 on the PC or on the PlayStation and Xbox 2. It's very odd. I played a lot of the PC beta and if they don't change anything as far as aim assist goes and that kind of thing, even on a controller it's going to be my preferred way to play, not because of frame rates, not because of graphical settings, but because it just felt better. And that's yeah, fucked. This is something that I normally don't know much about, you know, 30 versus 60, but a game that's very close to my heart got an upgrade of 60 frames per second on PS4 over PS3, and that was The Last of Us. Uh, and, and I played The Last of Us years ago on PS3, and I thought it was just magical. And then when I finally played it again at 60 frames per second on the PS4, I could never go back to 30. And so in that, in that way, I understand exactly where you guys are coming from. Uh, the PC version will be the superior place to play the game. But for me, being a console gamer primarily, this is what I'm used to. Playing Destiny on yeah. the PS4 feels fine for me. I haven't. You can't miss what you haven't really experienced. Now, if you have a nice PC and you have Destiny on your PC and you have it on PS4 and you have them both, you're going to play it on PC because you're going to feel the difference. But people like me, unless I decide to upgrade when I get my, you know, my new rig and stuff, which more than likely I will at some point, uh, in the future, P PS4 is fine. And I don't feel like we're getting left behind because we were the, the first adopters. I feel like, we're, like Wilson said, we're playing where our people are. We're playing, my, my entire friends list is literally on PS4. I have like five friends on Xbox and three friends on Steam, and that's you guys. Well, so, you, see, what you need to do is just send all your friends PCs so that you can just move them all over. Uh, I, you know, I know people with coats, but not the coats are not that big, bro. <laughs> I mean, for me, PC being the savior or not, I really don't care. Like, I care about me and my own experience. Like, I, I've never understood that why people will always look to what other people are doing and what other people want to do. But just, you know, if I take myself as a sample size of one, just the moment to moment gameplay, I will enjoy more on a native mouse and keyboard because that's the input that I prefer. The movement of 144 frames a second. Um, just the, the actual action of, of the larger field of view, all of these uh, minor improvements to me, whether you think it's got end game or not, just running public events, running strikes, just doing that kind of consistent loop, I will find infinitely more enjoyment in doing it with those creature comforts around, <clears throat> you know, the, the, the mouse and keyboard, the frames, um, yeah. the field of view, etc. So for me, yeah, I think it will be a savior. I, I will play through all the content again with a smile on my face, and I'll enjoy it so much more. This is I, I nothing just, new. I, I've never seen you smile, so I just <laughs> I got to see that. This is nothing new with I, games on like console when I play with you. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> this is nothing new. I mean, like like people want to get like, look, this isn't an attack when we say that like <clears throat> we, in our opinion. We think that the better experience is going to be on PC. First of all, that's our opinion. Secondly, it's nothing new, man. I mean, like this whole like games, you know, have better frame. There's been lots of games that have come out on console and PC, and a lot of people gravitate to the PC version. You know, I hate to use the example that everyone gives, but Overwatch. You know what I mean? Like people love the PC version. That's where a lot of people will eventually migrate to if they want to continue to play the game maybe competitively. There's still a lot of casual people that play on it that, you know, the game in itself, you could argue, is a competitive game because that's all you could do. But there's still a lot of casual players out there who don't give a shit about their ranking. You know, they just want to have fun. 
but like this is nothing new it's not a personal dig like if you're having yeah. fun then fuck everyone else yeah like, you know what yeah. i mean like it's as simple as that like if you're having a good time with your friends who's anyone to say that they're having more fun than you or you're not allowed to have that amount of fun however an addendum to that statement which i totally agree with wilson <laughs> is that if you see your friends having fun it is your duty as a friend to bust it up. <laughs> oh, there you go. So if I see Beastly having fun with his Yobo, my immediate reaction is, why are you holding that toaster? <laughs> and if you ever want to just generally feel bad about yourself or feel better about the Destiny 2 community, take Wilson's advice. Go and play PC Overwatch. Get to about bronze and silver ranking and then join team chat. Just, just do it. I'm not even going to go into it. Just, just do it. Enjoy it. Just enjoy it. It's funny uh, that you know this seems to be a new thing, but this has been kind of ubiquitous across gaming for at least the past 15 years. At PC oh, versions of games, that. PC you know, versus console is, I feel like, relatively new. But even even back in the 90s, it was a thing. And yeah, the console like wars Doom. between. Yeah. Yeah, Nintendo Doom. and Sega, Quake. and between Sony and Nintendo, and between Sony and Microsoft. I mean, you know, everybody wants to justify their own purchase, and they, you know, they want to. But, but you know what? Feel I, superior because of the decision they made. It, it was really solidified just now by Wilson, and I think that at the end of the day, that really should be everyone's motivation. Have fun. Yeah. If you're playing your Xbox One and you're playing with your friends, have fun. If you're on your PS4 and you're playing with your friends, have fun. And the same with PC. Enjoy yourself. That's what this shit is all about. Next topic. Rapid fire. What does that mean? Where are we at? Where are we at? We video, are... video game amnesia. Yes. I like if this you one. could choose one video game from your past that you could forget at any time you wanted and replay it over and over again, uh, what would you choose? Now, this topic was submitted by an awesome guy named Beastly Gamer a while back, but we never used it. Thank you, Beastly Ooh. Gamer. His name B B G, Beastly. Never heard of him. He's big girth. Okay, <laughs> big girth. That's better. Ooh, so I've the, heard of the, him. The, the, yeah, <laughs> you know, they know. What up, big so, perm? I mean, big worm. <laughs> <laughs> big perm. So this topic is is really cool because you can use it at any time, multiple times. So wait, 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 wait. wait. Can we just can we revisit that? You just said that you submitted it, and you came up with the line, this topic is really cool. You, just... <laughs> you know I have a picture of myself on the wall and a backup in a bag? This is one of the best this topics. We're winning. Thing, We're winning with this topic. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best topic of the day. Everybody else had good ones. So this is the best. Sorry, I want so... to interrupt. I'll carry on with the most winning topic of the day. The other topics make me sad. Me too. <laughs> So if you could choose any game from your past, any game in the entire history of your life that you could forget at the drop of a dime, you had to have a dime, but you could play through the game and immediately forget it to play through it again, over and over again, what game would you choose? And that's for everybody. This is going to be uh, I'm going to awesome. go ahead and say, I, I've answered this question before. We answered this on uh, Beastly Thoughts. Mm -hmm. um, and my answer back then was uh, the original Bioshock because that game was just outstanding. Uh, but like it was so story based that I didn't feel like replaying it would give you the same effect. But mm -hmm. now I've actually changed that. It'd be The Witcher Three. Uh, if I could go back Ooh. and play The Witcher Three blind again, um, the side quests were so surprising. The main quest is brilliant. I love mm -hmm. the upgrade paths. I love finding the loot. I love finding you know the Witcher gear. I like the you know, like just ex the world is so interesting to explore and so fully fleshed out. Uh, both DLCs really switch things up in meaningful ways. I'm still planning on playing it again anyway, but if I can <laughs> go back and play it blind, oh my God, I play that game over and over again. It'd be my game. <laughs> that, was, that was that was really a big shock for me, Briar, when you actually played through that and you, you were telling us about it every week. Yeah. It, it was very meaningful. All yeah, right, guys. get Tefty to play it. He will not play that game. I don't know what it. I think he knows like how big of an undergoing it is, and he keeps yeah. telling everyone that he's gonna play it. But like, I don't it's think he ever will. Like, <laughs> you, you got to dedicate like 60, 70 hours to it, and that's oh, just minimum. More than yeah. that, minimum. Yeah. Like 60, that's, 70 that's, that's weeks. 
that's a big investment, and that's why I've tried to stay away from RPGs for the most part. Oh, that's why I love them, man. Oh, what would you play? So good, though. What would I replay? Oh, dude, I have so many answers, dude. Like just that are just hit me, hit me. Mario RPG, Earthbound, Chrono Trigger, Legend of Zelda: Link to the Past, Final Fantasy Tactics, Destiny, uh, Metal Gear Solid One, Two. Um, any of of the old uh, Castlevania series. Symphony of the Night. Uh, that that'd be Symphony of the Night. Listen, Boom. I got a question for you. What about these games? makes you want to forget your first playthrough and play through them blind for the first time now. The story, man, because I've played them all so much that like I can, it's it's like a song that I've listened to a million times. I know every lyric, I know every beat, I know where everything's at. And uh, Link to the Past, like there's there's dungeon randomizers which are really cool and help with that. I wish that they would do them for like Earthbound. And I mentioned Chrono Trigger so much, but like, you know, at least Chrono Trigger had like 11 different endings or 13 or something stupid. But like I've that one's a little different. I don't necessarily know that one like the back of my hand because of all the different paths you have to take. But dude, Legend is if I had to pick one. OK, let's pick one. Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. That was probably one of my greatest growing up gaming memories that I've had as a kid when I got that for Super Nintendo, man. I think I had touched on how I kept, like, the J.C. JCPenney catalog cut out, like, took the page out mm. and kept it in my pocket and, like, read it all the time. Like, dude, yeah. that that universe, man, like, just the whole idea of, like, adventure and swords and shields and magic and, like, monsters and, like, just all that stuff's, like, super intriguing to me. And the it graphical upgrade, the game it really does, up. dude. There's... A lot of people that still play it you know there's a guy i follow andy on twitch who's one of the top speedrunners for that game and he's really fun to watch he does a lot of randomizers and he'll do races with partner races it's really it's kind of complicated but what was the one that, that came out for the 3ds a few years ago that was based link on link worlds. to the past link, link between, between worlds. worlds that game was fantastic oh, yeah. too it's, it's, yeah. I, it's in my 3ds right now man like i haven't played it in a long time but i mean the last time i did play my 3ds that's what i was playing um, you know, I'm seeing, you know, a lot of it's from the Super Nintendo era for me. Like, I'm seeing Super Metroid in chat. Like, boom, I had an awesome oh. summer where I went to my dad's house in Missouri and played Super Metroid. Like, my dad got me the game and he got me the, the player's guide so I could literally find everything. If I got and, the SNES Mini, that'd be the first game I'd go to because it's it's actually been so long since I played it that it'd almost be like a blind playthrough at this point. Yeah. Oh, I didn't tell you guys. I modded my my Super Nintendo Mini and I put 230 more games on it. It's what fucking the, unbelievable. What's the, that's stealing, you, you know, Beastly, right? Just, you know hey, I own the, the games, okay? All 230, Briar. Right. I don't believe I that believe. for a fucking you second. You, you <laughs> it's because I'm black, ain't it? No, it's because I fucking know you. You're fucking buying shit out the back of guys' vans at gas stations. Yeah. They always you happen boot. to have everything I need, Briar. You it's like if I was going grocery NES shopping, there'd be a guy saying, you need a Thanksgiving turkey? i go, sure do. <laughs> Hold on, I want to hear what Gary has to say about wait, this. Wait. You bought the SNES Mini, which is the official way to emulate those games legitimately, and then you've modded it so you've paid a hundred dollars to do what you could have just bought an snes no, controller no, for look, your pc and done let me explain to you no very no, good point very, very good point no that's not true is, first of all I bought, firstly i why. bought two that one there has never been open secondly this is by far the best super nintendo emulator of all time because it the controller it's a real super nintendo you can so, I mean, buy a, a real super, super nintendo, nintendo controller, controller and plug it into a pc you don't well, even need to do that. You could just splice them and download the drivers. You can take a shitty USB, cut it, take a Super Nintendo controller, cut it, connect the wires, and then download the drivers, and you can have an official Super Nintendo controller on PC. Official. Holy shit, Wilson. I didn't know that it worked that oh, way. Official. You done fucked up. <laughs> so, so I, I done fucked up, but I love it. All right, so look, I'm going to run through a quick couple of games I would do. I do Shadow of the Colossus because that game meant a lot to me when it came out. It was really amazing. Super Mario World, Mario 3, Castlevania Symphony of the Night, Fallout 3, uh, The Elder Scrolls uh, Oblivion, which is the first Elder Scrolls game I ever played. And of course, first and foremost, the game I would probably do every week. Pick one. Would be I want to hear. Pick the, one. The Last of Us. Last of Us? There you go. That's a good I, one. That game is so... Oh, man, nobody talks about it anymore. 
But that game had this so many emotions. Six years old. Talk about Shut up. So how old is Mario, Briar? Mario got gray hair on his There's balls. There's a new Mario coming Luigi out this year. Ten games just now. <laughs> Mario and doesn't age, man. And coming out next year. Mario looked pretty dope with his yeah. nipples out on the beach last week. Yeah, yeah. The girls really dig him, man. He don't even need no six-pack. They still think he's cute. Mm. My question Damn. for this one was a bit of clarity in video game amnesia. Do I go back to the time when I first played it as well? Or do I just play it as no, an old man? No, you play it playing... today, but you don't remember playing it the first time. Because that's the thing. Because some of these games, it wouldn't. You have... wouldn't play them. You wouldn't play them. They've aged badly. Like in World yeah. of Warcraft, right? Which would have been mine. World of Warcraft would have been mine, but not in its current state. So I wouldn't like to play it for the first time now. But if I could go back to as it was in vanilla or in the Burning Crusade when I first played it, and everything was new, and every all the people in the community were all experiencing it for the first time, and there was a genuine two years of mystery and intrigue and discovery. Yeah, sure you can community. go back, Gary. This is your 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 fantasy. This is your world, and Gary. It has to be World of Warcraft because it took what everything, every other company was doing with MMOs and built the perfect fantasy MMO that mm. for a good seven years was unstoppable and peaked at 12 million concurrent players. It was That's that like, good? Uh, it, was, it was. It's still great now, but it was... It's I played it million. and I was bored to tears. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're in the minority. No, you, you, and more than likely you are, Briar, because I've heard a lot of people talk about World of Warcraft, and I've never played the game. Uh, you know, I've played, never uh, ever played it, Beatsy. No, never. Oh, not man. Once. You know what we should do? One night we should all get together and have Gary give us a tour of World of Warcraft. I, I, I should do. Down. No, it's Gary's tutorial video teaching three fucking noobs who know nothing about it. Gary, and we only play shit. it while he's teaching us. And it's so free for each you time we Up come back, we're Oh my god, about. I love this like a series. 20, it's free. Mm -hmm. I, I only have one question about the game because I never played it, Gary. What's it's the not fucking... on PlayStation and it's not on SNES or the Yobo. What's the what's the fucking like? What's the fucking like? Man, Is if there... you go and role play a night elf Ooh. in Goldshire and dance on a table for someone, they'll 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 give you plenty of gold for it. There's a good it's chance good. that someone's getting fucked. <laughs> okay, I'm down. <laughs> All right, as we're gonna talk someone. about this though for real, and we're gonna do okay. this. Okay, I'm down. I'm in it. All right, what's okay. the next question? The trend towards hardcore gaming and why is casual a dirty word? So, the uh, hit points are Dark Souls difficulty, roguelike, one life games. Why is this genre so relevant? When did easy games with a good story and experience stop being cool? Mario Odyssey, you can't die. You'll never see a game over screen. Does that make it any worse? Should all games have a god mode for players without elite skills? <laughs> elite skills. Elite skills to still enjoy the experience. Will games keep getting harder or will the filthy casuals finally win the battle? Um, that was the best question of the week. Uh, I think that was submitted by this guy Gary something. Oh, never oh, it, says, it says English muffin. <laughs> I see the I see the muffin. Yeah, English muffin. Thank you, English muffin, for your submission. We appreciate you. Casual yeah. is a dirty word. I'll tell you why casual is a good, dirty word is because the decisions that developers make to attract casuals to games suck. Yeah, they they poorly affect the experience that hardcore players are looking at. So mm -hmm. hardcore players want deep. They want things that yep. are going to take forever to complete. They want things that are, you know, very difficult to figure out and that they, you know, they cause a lot of, you know, like, uh, you know, thinking about, you know, what role does this give me and what what skill tree should I go down on this playthrough? And like all of the most hardcore things make a game look absolutely impenetrable to a casual player. Now, that, that's assuming that a casual player is the kind of casual player that, you know, wants to play uh, a, a quick game on their phone or a quick game, a story game for six hours, uh, but never dive into the, the multiplayer or something like that. There's different definitions for casual gamers. Some people consider a casual <laughs> gamer just somebody who plays less time. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't consider that casual at all. I, I really consider it. You can be hardcore if you play four hours a week. No doubt about it. Like the Pope Bear, who always is calling himself a casual gamer. That guy ain't casual. He's on a Destiny fucking podcast. There's nothing <laughs> casual about that. <laughs> He's filthy, but he ain't casual. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> like, I, I, I totally hear what you're saying. And, like, in the same sense, like, I'm, I'm glad you kind of touched on, like, that 
a hard or a casual experience infringes on hardcore players, but in the same time, a hardcore experience infringes on casual players. Mm -hmm. The the hard thing is to find that balance. And I feel like we kind of make that transition from young to old. I've been gaming for a long time. All of us have. I mean, and a lot of people in chat, a lot of people listening to this have been gaming most of their lives. <clears throat> no matter how old you are, it's a long time. Um, I kind of feel like you kind of make that evolution as you get older from a casual into a hardcore gamer. I feel like in a sense, if you're really passionate about the game you play, or any games for that matter that makes you a hardcore gamer. Like you're, if you're passionate about it and you really want to get be, get behind it, that's what that's what makes you a hardcore gamer. It's not about the out, amount of hours you put in. It's not about if you fucking earned your Galahorn or or zerned it or whatever. Like that has nothing to do with it. The fact that you're there, you're playing, and you're passionate about it is what makes you a hardcore gamer. Sometimes though, you get older and responsibility falls in your lap. <clears throat> I'm the only one that's you know I. The only one here that doesn't have, you know, kids, youngins. I got lots of time, man. Keep it zipped you know? up, man. Keep it zipped up. I do, man. I do. Um, but so <laughs> the thing is, is like, you know, sometimes responsibility happens. Jobs, nine to fives, multiple nine to fives, children, multiple children. You know, these things happen that prohibit your time that you can spend with gaming. And that doesn't make you any less than a hardcore gamer. If anything, that makes you a hardcore parent, man. And that's what comes first, you know, those sort of things. Like, <laughs> I'm a casual parent. You're going to be a hardcore parent. parent. You're a casual parent. You're a casual parent. I only do what I have to and try to get like the clan rewards. I feel like if we keep repeating this. Yeah, Gary has a kid. I feel like the more 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 we repeat the phrase hardcore parent, the more likely we are to end up on a list somewhere on the internet. So let's use a different term. (laughs) Absolutely, Gary. Think ahead. You're right. You see what I was getting at, though. You know, like it, it, it. it, it it depends on what your definition like some people do think that their definition of hardcore gaming is you got to have a certain level of prestige in call of duty or you got to have the newest baddest shit in destiny you got to have all the iron banner weapons you got to be a completionist you know so to speak and i think it's in the eye of the beholder man like i hate True. to be a cop out with my answer to this but i think it's all in the eye of the beholder um sometimes it's used as an insult you know other times it's I don't know, man. Like, yeah. it, it's tough. You're, you're absolutely right here, uh, Wilson. Uh, uh, there are certain sects of games that I've never had an affinity towards. I don't play sports simulators. You never see me buying Madden or, you know, any NBA Lives or anything like that. I don't play them. But I have friends who play that exclusively. You consider themselves... And they're hardcore about it. Hardcore gamers. And when yeah. they talk to me about these games, and I say, man, I haven't bought, like, a Madden in 12 years. They said, man, you ain't, you ain't no gamer. I said, you have no fucking idea who you're talking to. It, it is in the eye of the beholder. There's people out there who buy one game a year, and they'll play that game exclusively, and they'll play it for a year. There are people who only play Destiny. That's it. I work in photography with a guy who plays, I can't remember the name of the game, but it's a phone game. He plays it constantly. Uh, it's one of those like uh, games where you have to wait a little bit, or you can mm. buy, like, it's pay to, pay to play. Yeah, it is a pay to play game, but his he's really happy with himself because he's never actually put any money into it, and he's a he's in like a top ranked clan. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, so he's like is it Clash of Clans? It's not Clash of Clans, but it's like Clash of Clans, but it's it's more like a modern military thing. Desert or no? What is it? Mobile Strike. Mo- mobile I think strike, it's man. Mobile Strike. Yeah, Download it's three for now from the App Store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The guy that was even, but I mean, they used he to have plays the, advert of the the women with the the big asses in the in the. Bikini. I believe so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. yeah. yeah that's it. He yeah, plays. Desert Strike. You can't say that guy's not a hardcore g- gamer. He spends tons of time in mm-hmm. just headspace. He's always talking about the game and always thinking about the game. You know. Well, you know, like, well, tell him you know he's a hardcore gamer. We don't respect that shit. I had to get my sons out of that game. Yeah. Playing that filthy casual shit. I mean, hardcore oh, gamers. Punk go. ass kids. I, had, yeah, I told my sons, like, give me that goddamn iPhone. Give me go that play your PlayStation. IPhone. What's wrong with you? <laughs> you too. I'm having flashbacks. I don't want to talk about phone games Triggered. anymore. Triggered. Yeah. Get I, him I, out I, of I, here. Cut his I, mic. Shit. <laughs> phone what was games, the one? Dude. It was a tower defense game that came out <laughs> real early in the life of the iPhone. Oh my God. I played the shit out of that game. I mean, I we've all had. I remember, Briar, you introduced me to one where there was like this little blob like three years ago. Badlands. That, yeah. I love that <laughs> and, game. That game was yeah. cool. Those, was I mean, cool. games on phones can be fun. I, 
one of the most casual, I would consider casual games I've ever played and fell in love with was Pixel Junk Monsters. Uh-huh. And I played it, I played it on the PS, uh, PSP and my Vita. And every time I play that game, I get balls deep in it and I can't get out of it. So it is a subjective thing. I tell you know, you what, if, if I didn't have a job, I would main Pokemon Go. Yeah, like, that's I was the thing. The only that, thing that stops me, stops me playing Pokemon Go is a full time job. Like, if I could just walk the earth and collect Pokemon, that would be it. That would be my life. Dude, I was just going to say that. Like, the only, like, I would, it would be like fucking midnight, one o'clock in the morning. I'd be like, oh, I'm going to go take dog for a walk. You know what I mean? And I'd be going down the street, the, fucking the phone out. playing Pokemon Go and shit. Yeah. And my dog would be tired and I'd be like, dude, like, I. The gym's there's, right there's, here. There's a Fido. squirtle around here somewhere. I live by the river, dude. Like it's around here. Can we just walk like another like ten miles? Like and, and Sam calls the police and they pull up and say, "Excuse me, are you Wilson?" We, we well, my got buddy, my buddy, I went to high school high school with is like, he's like the canine unit in this town. Yeah. So he'd know me. He'd he'd see me from a mile away and be like, "That's Wilson." Like, yeah, he'd call, <laughs> call your girl and say, "Hey, look, we, we found him uh, over by the river. I found him. Uh, He's in the middle of catching look, a, squirtle. a squirtle. He's not in violation of any <laughs> ordinances. So you just gotta let him chill. You gotta let him chill. <laughs> Dude, Pokemon Go would be dope as shit. And you can't say that those people aren't hardcore gamers either, man. They're fucking getting out and doing physical activity. And they actually had like some big fucking live stream where like in multiple cities around the world they had like these pokemon go events where there was like thousands of people fucking throwing mm. pokeballs I, fucking I actually, everywhere in a, like inadvertently this year on vacation spent a hundred dollars um on pokemon go without meaning to um when i was in states in florida um the main reason i was paying for you know data roaming where you can pay mm. i think it's like at ten dollars a day um for the 10 days i was there so that i could use my phone when i was out and about the only reason I was paying for that data roaming was for Pokemon Go. It was exclusively. <laughs> trying to get those exclusive United States Pokemon. There was Wi-Fi in the room and stuff. You know, I didn't need it to contact home. But there wasn't Wi-Fi where the Pokemon were at. And they were out in the bushes, man. I had to go and hunt them. So all day long walking around Florida. I got, I got two of the region exclusives. I got Heracross and Corsula, which are like, you can only get them in Florida. I was so happy. That's why you let that herring take your fucking fishing pole, because you were too busy trying to catch a fucking <laughs> Snorlax or something. Like, Good stuff, man. True, <laughs> true, true. I tell you, that, I, I, could, I could genuinely main Pokemon Go. I shit you oh, that's, that's, I, You know what, Gary? I had no idea that you wrote. I mean, I, I've never played it. Uh, my kids what? really got into it at some point, but, you know, I'm an old guy compared to you. You know what's you, fun Gary, about so it too, BC, is that it's totally a good family activity too. Mm-hmm. Like so is fishing, man. It and you can you can play it together. Like if you guys stop at, you know, you stop at the mall and like one person, like your wife has to run in to, you know, grab something. You're all sitting yeah. in the car talk, talking about, are there Apple any Pokemon Lua. here? You know, like it, it's, it's fun. competitive as <laughs> shit, man, as well. Because if you get the one gyms. more than them, that's it. You know, they've got to one up you. It was good. <laughs> The gyms Dude. too. You can battle and stuff like that. It, yeah. it, it's a, it's a really cool game, man. I might have to get back. I might have to start playing it again. Oh, oh that. god, now Gary! That I'm talking about it. it was Gary fun. gets people into shit. I tell yeah, you, does. man. Good. You should do a problems. fucking. You should do a fucking IRL Pokemon Go stream. <laughs> eh. I love it. I love it. Yeah, oh, you just have to be careful about where you go, though. <clears throat> yeah, especially now you get robbed. Give me your underwear. All right. So the next topic is: What do we think? about cyberpunk 2077 this topic was submitted by scott Ga- cannon i was i felt like it was going to be gannon but it's canon i'm sorry I know as a two huge things fa- oh i'm sorry go ahead as a huge fan of the witcher i'm super excited about cyberpunk 2077 says scott what do you all know about this title and what's what sort of possibilities could this have for gaming i know two things one i'm definitely getting it and two whatever the special awesome extreme edition of it is I'm getting that too, <laughs> because The Witcher Three sold me so hard on what CD Projekt Red is up to that I don't even care. Like they've got a free pass for me for the next game. I'm definitely I'm gonna you know whatever their super awesome like you know eight hundred dollar statue in your front yard edition is. I'm getting that. It, are you, you're not gonna put it in your front yard, are you, dude? If it's like an eight foot tall statue, I'm doing it. We're doing it. Making what's, your, what's your address again? I can't make a road that. trip. Oh, I fucking show. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Easy there, <laughs> dude. All I've seen from Cyberpunk is the trailer and the fucking particle effects, dude. 
whoosh, man, I'm in. And like yeah. Briar said, CD Projekt Red, like I'm balls deep in The Witcher right now. Like, and I, dude, more from, like, you know, obviously it's not the same universe, but they're the obviously same, the capable team, of swinging that artist, big dick. Yeah. Yeah, these guys are working on a different level than every other game maker right now, as far as mm-hmm. I can tell. They, they, they would yeah. be what we what we consider trendsetters. You know, The Witcher kind of turned the world on its ear uh, with everything they did with that RPG. The, the the size of the world, the world building, the the, the characters, the story, uh, and so they're they're one of the few developers that, like Briar said, get that pass. You know, when Rockstar is coming out with, people are going to buy. When CD Projekt Red comes out with, people are going to buy. Naughty Dog, the same thing. So, yeah, I'm definitely picking this game up. There's no question about it. And I pray to God that I actually finish it. You see, the the part of Scott's question um, that he was asking was about whether or not we'd see it as a game changer. Because in the open world RPG space, I can't remember a game recently that has been a sci-fi kind of Blade Runner-esque yeah. you know, film noir setting. It's all been Fallout fantasy 4. and wizards and elves. That's post-apocalyptic. That's, yeah. That's kind of not the same as going into, you know, like a Blade Runner city where it's yeah, kind of that true. feel, like a living, which is what cyberpunk is meant to be. Um, so for me, definitely, I think this could be very influential and in something that mm-hmm. maybe you get like one fantasy game and then you get the next five years of fantasy games trying to be that, that mm-hmm. you know, catch that fire. Um, I think this could be something that starts more sci-fi in our games, which... You know, for me, could be um, could be something important. I mean, I'm super, super excited about it, and the reason that I am is, like you say, what the credibility that CD Projekt Red have got. I played The Witcher as well myself recently, um, just because I wanted to see what it looked like on a couple of monitors I had in the Steam Link and just having a look. And I was in uh, one of the early levels um, near Novigrad in in a forest, and just looking at the way they built forests and the placement of trees and the lay and the topography of the land. I've never seen a game that looks more like a real forest than The Witcher 3. I genuinely believe that I'm in a forest when I'm playing that game, and no other game has ever captured that. I've always felt like I'm in a video game forest. Mm. Um, so if they can build you know, futuristic, film noir, Blade Runner-esque cities, total recall-feeling cities with that believable credibility, then, yeah, I'm, I'm down. So, Man. yeah, Scott, I agree. It, it can be a game-changer for sure. For sure. Uh, I think we're all excited f- uh, for this game. You guys let us know what you think in the comments. Trend, I think it could be a trendsetter. That's all I really want to end on. I think, I think because they haven't shown us too to much. Suit. The stuff that they've shown is like uh, CG cut scenes and stuff like that. You know, once we actually see the game and what their true vision is, I think we'll be a lot more excited. The next topic is a short one, but it's I'm sure it's going to uh, really open up the conversation. Marvel or DC and why? This was submitted by Tony Avila. He says, what side of the chasm do you fall on, Marvel, DC, or anything else? Why did you pick the side you do? 100% Marvel. Really? Uh, why did I pick the side that I did? Um, X-Men, dude. X-Men was awesome, man. Like uh, The cartoons I used to watch like every morning before school. Um, I, was, I was into all the trading cards, stuff like that. Like I think it was... Um, it wasn't Donris. It was uh, Tops, I think, who put out. Yeah. My parents own a, a sports memorabilia store. So when I was a kid, I was like, hey, y'all got that wholesale hookup. Why don't you get some X-Men cards and I'll work for the rest of my life. And, uh, you know, you can hook me up with like a box or two. And I had the whole set, dude. And that shit was awesome, man. You know, like Wolverine and Sabretooth had so much history, dude. So much rich lore and like awesome like i mean i don't even know if it's like an obscure x-men character but like omega red was dope like there was just so much cool stuff and like i mean like batman and shit was cool dude but it just wasn't i was oh god here i'm gonna say this i was that edgy kid who wanted like you know batman was cool you know pow boom pam you know all that stuff but i wanted like fucking superpowers and people falling out of the sky and shit blowing up and like not the end of Gotham, but like the end of the world, unless we do some shit about this. And like X-Men really delivered with that. With that being said, things like Superman and Batman are still really dope. And I have the utmost respect for people if that's their preferred, you know, way of, um, I just just couldn't get into it. It wasn't dark enough for me. X-Men was, it wasn't really that dark, but it was darker, if that makes sense. Well, for for me, it's, 
it's, it's a little bit more complicated. I would say Image Comics, not because of Spawn or anything like that, but because that's of the not Walking. That's a choice. I would say Image Comics, Beastly. not because of. That's not Beastly. If you guys hear anything? It's not, not a choice. Because... Not because of Spawn, <laughs> but the Walking Dead comic book series is amazing. Uh, and, and DC doesn't have enough characters for me to really... They never suited my, my, my taste as far as uh, heroes or villains. They do have some good ones. Batman, of course, uh, Joker, Superman. But, you know, other than four or five top-tier heroes and villains, the rest of them are extremely obscure and lackluster compared to the offerings of Marvel. So uh, yeah. Marvel is definitely the one for me, especially as of late, what, what uh, Disney has been doing with the Marvel films. And of course, the, the comics have, are just as prevalent today as they, they've always been. You got characters like Wolverine, of course, the X-Men, the Avengers, uh, and, and everything in between. Of course, Marvel to me has the best, the best uh, superheroes. And they always say that DC has the best villains, but if you ask me, they're pretty close there as well. So my answer is definitely Marvel. Uh, I, I wish The Walking Dead was in Marvel because that's one of the best comics I've ever read in my life. You see, I think I, I'm going to kind of agree with you guys on the Marvel for a few reasons, but I just think DC characters just didn't feel that cool. Like, if you actually analyse Batman and go a bit deep onto him, his superpower is his money. Like, that is his one superpower. It's pretty that's powerful. Beautiful. It's pretty yeah, powerful. I'm not going to lie. Zuckerberg's got money. Jeff Bezos has got money. Bill Gates Man, has got money. They're running the world, dude. Yeah, but they're not Batman. I mean, if you if you no, they're not money, Batman, right? but they could be because well, they got enough know. fucking money to be. Yeah, you Bruce, don't nobody know. Nobody knows Bruce what Wayne if... is Batman in no. in the comic book. What I'm saying is Jeff Bezos <laughs> could be fucking Batman, and we just don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> Eli Musk could be, or Elon Musk could be a superhero. You know, he's got all what this I'm money. We don't know. <laughs> with Batman, if you took his money away, right, he's an orphan with anger management issues. He's a therapist, not Puerto a Rico That's all I'm thinks saying. that Elon Musk is a superhero. Really? <laughs> he just, brought the gift of electricity. <laughs> it's a huge thing, man. Yeah, that's that's really, real. There ain't no comment. It's some serious see, shit. Superman, right? He's not, not all heroes a, wear capes, Gary. Not all heroes. He's not capes. a Superman, right? He's not a Superman. He's an alien who's gone and started. It's like me walking into a kindergarten and just bitch slapping the kids. Are you saying that Elon center. Musk is a alien? No. Can we talk about that? Can we talk about... Oh, my God. Can we talk... I'm kidding. <laughs> he he <laughs> crawled out of the Walmart tunnels, I heard. Um, <laughs> don't go there. Don't get me started. Moving on. But, yeah, I mean, Marvel, for me, I think they've just got cooler heroes. Um, like you say, they've got... You know, if you watch the new Logan movie, like, man, Logan got me jacked up on Wolverine. Mm. Like, that dude's cutting heads and splicing brains and all that sort of stuff. It's just things that you don't really see in DC... You know, I, I guess you do see it in the comics. Like, there was a few comics I liked, like the stuff that Frank Miller wrote, like um, The Killing Joke. If you've ever read that Joker story where the, the Joker, you know, paralyzes uh, Jim Gordon's daughter and takes her through and shows up. Spoiler! Of her yeah, it's it's old. It's from the 80s. <laughs> if you, you, yelled you know, it quick, too. too soon. But yeah, and, and again, I, I, liked, I liked all that stuff. But yeah, in, in the modern cinematic age and the modern age of comics, I think it's difficult to be a DC fan right now. I do think that people, you know, Marvel are just shitting gold left, right, and center. And the only thing good that's come out of DC in the past 10 years has been the Wonder Woman movie, I think. No, only... dude. Just for Dark Nolan, Knight, Batman. Man. Come on. Dark Knight yeah. was so dope. Nolan, that's dude. not that's DC that's Studios, though. That wasn't but at DC. the same time, it's, it's a Batman. fucking DC concept. Like, it's... if you make a fucking movie about Mario, fucking, you're going to give some sort of credit to fucking Nintendo. But, like, yeah. I, I kind of go back on what I said about, like, it not being dark enough because. There are some aspects in comics of Batman that are extremely fucking dark. You know, the Joker <clears throat> in certain aspects was a fucking crazy motherfucker. And, like, did, I did yeah. love the movie. Like, Heath Ledger, that's probably one of nice. my favorite performances, hands down, of it's any movie stupendous. of all time. I know, we're, I know we're talking comics here. But ultimately, I'm not, I just wanted to make it come out. Like, I'm not shitting on Batman and Superman. I think they're both awesome. But the question asked me to pick one. And I'm going to go with Marvel, but like I kind of going back a little bit on what I said, because there was some really dark shit with Batman. And like, that's kind of what I was more into, like that whole you want to see a pencil disappear and he fucking slams that dude's head down on it. Like that shit's yeah. awesome. Christopher Nolan made the best superhero films of all time. I don't I'm going to go against the grain here. And I'm going to say 
uh, DC. And I don't read comic books. I never have been a comic book fan for whatever reason. I've just never been able to do it. Uh, but the movies, everybody loves the current like Avengers movies, and they're great. Uh, I don't actually like them that much, to be honest with you. I said they're great, but I don't actually like them that much. <laughs> like, I just watched Spider-Man Homecoming. I thought it was pretty ho-hum. Oh, um, geez, that was awesome. Uh, I mean, mm. how many fucking Spider-Man movies are we going to watch that are origin stories? That's all I'm saying. They've been, they made, like, fucking nine of them already. <laughs> that wasn't an origin story. You yeah, watch that pretty again. much was. He's still in high school, well, whatever. I, I saw it. Guardians <laughs> of the Galaxy here. Okay. Guardians of the Galaxy. So here's the thing. I, I agree with you about Guardians of the Galaxy, and I know that they're going to tie Guardians of the Galaxy of the galaxy with like the Avengers movie. But to me, the risk of them ruining that franchise by joining it to the Avengers is so fucking high that it has me a little bit upset with Marvel (laughs) because I don't like the Avengers movies. They're not good. They're not good movies. But okay, well you're you're in a huge, you're in a very small minority in in that department. I understand that, but I can, I can honestly say I don't like the movies and I haven't seen a single one. Really? To me, like that's really? a big problem. But if you talk to me about DC movies, yeah, they bring some stinkers. But Wonder yeah. Woman was better than any of the Avengers movies, and I would say mm-hmm. any of the Marvel movies in general, except for Guardians of the Galaxy one, no way. and possibly Iron Man one. Uh, no way. Wonder Woman was phenomenal, and it was okay the Dark Knight, Batman Begins, and the Dark Knight are better than any of the Marvel movies. Period. Like, there's I no, agree. there's <laughs> absolutely no. No Winter Soldier, there. man. Come on, Winter Soldier. Guardians of the Galaxy. Look, uh, I, I, I agree with you, Briar. I think Wonder Woman was a really good movie. Yeah. Uh, is it as good as the Avengers? I don't think so. But, of course, this is, you know, it's subjective. And then uh, the but- TV series, we have Gotham, which I I really enjoy Gotham. It's one of the few TV shows I don't, I don't like to miss. I really enjoy that show. Uh, Daredevil was pretty good in season one and season two, but most of the shit that's coming out from Netflix as far as the Marvel TV shows, it's been fucking t- Jessica terrible. Jones. Uh, Jessica the Jones was terrible. Uh, first the Luke first Cage. season was really good. Luke Cage was, was terrible. Good. Hated it. No, the first Iron five Fist episodes of Luke sucked. Cage was awesome. Yeah, but then they, they, they went down a fucking hole and was yeah. chased by Drano. Like, it was so bad. <laughs> <Ooh>. That's awesome. <laughs> hey, you're, you're right, Brian. I, <laughs> Brian, you might change my mind here. And I would uh, say I it's less than the first five episodes. I'd say it was like the first two episodes were pretty good of Luke Cage. Look. The, the very first Daredevil was excellent. Daredevil, <laughs> the very first season was excellent. I didn't like season two. Jessica Jones season one was amazing to me. Nah. Uh, I thought that I thought it was. I thought it, it cast a different The only thing good there. about Jessica Jones season one was Kilgore. He was awesome. Uh, he was. But I, I, I do agree. I thought Luke Cage was just, it sucked to me. You know, I couldn't get past like that. I watched the entire thing, but by the time I got to the fifth episode, Variety Right, I was like, "This is shit." And the same thing with uh, Iron Fist, and then this Iron whole team, this whole yeah, team up, they 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 had ruined it so badly. By the time that this you know this group uh, adventure came out, I didn't want to watch it. If so, they want to continue making Iron Fist, they have to recast it because that guy is terrible. But He's but a you do bad know, actor, and he doesn't you do know seem that, to know kung fu. <laughs> like which is the whole the, fucking the Netflix, point of the character. He's meant to be the living, <laughs> the living <laughs> fist, the living weapon, and he's just. I, I genuinely feel that I could beat him in a fight, and I have no fighting experience right. whatsoever. I've never been in a fight in my life, and I Meanwhile, think I could hold my own against the Iron Fist. Like I am, I'm enjoying almost every episode I watch at Gotham, and I actually like the Flash quite a bit too. I don't watch it that often, but when I do it watch it. it. It's a pretty fun. It's a pretty fun TV show. It's light, you know. It's light and it's easy to watch, and you don't have to watch every episode to know what's going on. All right. Well, I guess thank God we didn't do a, a revolver decides on this. That would have been really. really I, tough. I totally would have caved just because of Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, Guardians <laughs> I would have caved so, like a so fucking good. brick. And the only reason I went with DC is just to be contrary because I, I it really, it's all about Guardians of the Galaxy. I'm kind of with you a little <laughs> bit in the sense that the two Marvel movies that are my favorite weren't made by Marvel. So like Deadpool and Logan are like my Ooh, two man. standout right. favorite. Deadpool was like so Deadpool? fucking dope. I like Deadpool like the, so good. Do you like the Winter Soldier, Captain America? No, I no. thought that movie was what? terrible. I see it. All the Captain what? America movies are terrible. I was never a Captain America oh fan, God. man. Like, What's come that guy's on. name? Chris Evans? Winter Soldier, man. Yeah, that, Chris Evans. Chris Evans, there's torch. no depth to that character whatsoever. He's just, I'm a good guy. 
Watch the Winter Soldier, man. If you think that about the Winter Soldier, man, he had a lot of things with my friends. Yeah. Oh, I'd, uh, <laughs> I'd like to throw a, a spanner into the works there. He's got depth now. Did you see? Uh, he's got a beard, so that's added to the character. Yeah. You know what? You know what Captain America never does? He never kills a motherfucker just to get his scope. That's what he never does. That's the kind of character <laughs> I like to watch. Okay. <laughs> Chris Evans will forever be immortalized in my mind as Jake Weiler from Not Another Teen Movie. Old school. That PUBG All right, so reference, guys, though. We got Never forget one well. topic left. Who would like to cover the last topic? Gary, oh, yeah. do it. Gotta do it, Gary. Our perfect game is the closing topic of this mm-hmm. week's Revolver show. We find it easy to criticize games we play or games we read about. We offer a wealth of ways to improve them, but if we had infinite resource and capability, what would our own dream game be? Haven't we done what this? What would the topic? genre be? I feel like I've we haven't. talked about this. We did this in Beastly Thoughts about two years ago. Uh, okay. Okay, so mine, everybody knows mine, so I'll just go first. It's basically an FPS that is integrated oh, yeah. into Google Maps so that you could play an FPS shooter with your friends anywhere on the planet in real environments. Damn it, Brian. That's, that's it. And now I also want it in VR. <laughs> we'll say I think you're muted. I'm going to take that a step further, and uh-huh. I'm going to say um, an iteration of Google Sky, you What's know, which Google is like Sky? Google Sky is where you look around our solar system and find all sorts of fucked up things that shouldn't be there or that NASA tried to blur out real yeah. shitty UFOs um, and shit. Yeah, you know, obelisks on the moon, you know, things mm-hmm. like that sort of nature on the moon. You know, real common stuff here, Briar. Tower um, on <laughs> the <tower but>, <laughs> um, But for me, it would Can be you... uh, basically No Man's Sky, but what it was supposed to be, but with um, Google Earth, where it's actual real celestial oh, body, that's and you're going around that. exploring, and I want it in VR. Yes, I'll play that. I'll play mm. that. I'll buy that Absolutely. for $60. I'll buy the DLC, too. And that's too bad because it's going to be 90 because he's going to come with some kind of like dope ass <laughs> glass pendant because Wilson made uh-huh. it. Yeah. <laughs> Can you yeah, still access sort of, Google sort of Sky? NASA, um, you know, propaganda. It's going to be it's going to be NASA, but it's going to be spelled with two asses. Mm, <laughs> NASA. NASA. <laughs> Can you still get on Google Sky after NASA banned you? Is it still available? Uh, yeah, to I'm you? still good, man. They haven't quite. I like switched my IP around and stuff. I'm good. <laughs> you're right. You're yeah. You're on band now from NASA. <laughs> I don't know. For me, um, if I had to jump in on one there, I think it would have to be an MMO. Um, I think all games now, games of service or shared. I think MMO is a bit of a dead word. They're all kind of shared world games. That's kind of the new buzzword for what an MMO is. Massively multiplayer online is, is a shared world game. I don't know necessarily if I'd have a shooter even. I think it'd have to have some some shooter aspects to it or some sort of combat aspect to it. Because I think it would have to have something that you could do with friends. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say this is what the game has to be. But for me, I want a game that is the type of game that I can just come onto and always have something to do. A game that's persistent, evolving, and widespread. So I want a game that's almost as broad in its scope as you know you are as a human. In the sense that if you want to be a glass blower, creative in this in this universe and sell your wares and expand your enterprise in that way you can be if you want to be you know the space pirate you can go and do that and you can be that i know for me it's very much a game that's complete freedom of choice almost like another life but good good answer man yeah done man cheers for me thinking of the perfect game just makes my head hurt can i guess last of us three (gasps) Ooh, you, you, went one past. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I really appreciate I'm not a developer and I, I don't write video game stories. Um, a few years ago, I told Briar and, and the old show hosts about a, a skating game because it's something that doesn't exist. You know, being in a skating rink, everybody's gone to them. You know, there are probably a lot fewer today than there were 20 years ago. But to go to a skating rink and be there with your friends and be able to walk around in first person in this skating rink while music is, is being played in the background, whether or not it's a licensed music or, or not, but you can go over to the arcade and play actual arcades with your friends. Maybe if the game's made by a particular developer and they have the rights to old arcades, we could play that. Or you get out on the skate floor and, and hang out with your friends and do uh, combination moves. Like if you, if you time it and sync up your moves well Dude, enough, whip. you can form. Yeah. You okay. can form, form combinations with your we're friends. Get, and actually, 
No, we're going to get deeper there. onto this one. So <laughs> we gave Wilson any vehicle he could possibly have from everything that was invented, and he chose a bus to get high in. <laughs> he first I chose a DeLorean, <laughs> and then I started realizing that that the would truth. cost a lot of money, okay. and then I could we've spend given, less. Yeah. We, we've given Beastly any game in the world, <laughs> anything. We want to go skating. Scope. And he's chosen to go roller skating yeah. with his friends. But wait a minute, break it down further because he's not roller skating in this grand world that is open to just a skating rink. Any possibility, he's picked a wooden floor inside mm -hmm. a skating rink. With <laughs> maybe, you, maybe you know what? His music. It, Was it Tanya <laughs> Harding's pro ice skater? Is that what no. we're doing? Nancy <laughs> Kerrigan and Tanya Harding are out of this adventure. Well, you right. do get to keep your kneecaps and see, see a guy come with a baseball bat. It's generic DLC. soundtrack. By but, the look, check it out, guys. And this is probably more nostalgia for anything that, for myself than anything else. I grew up skating. Uh, my family skated. We all, we're all, you know, avid roller skaters. I haven't done it in a few years, but we spent a lot of time in my teen years skating and doing all kinds of crazy moves and dancing on the skate floor, basically. And it's something I don't do often. And I thought to myself years ago, I, I probably got shit on three or four years ago when I talked about this, too. I'm pretty sure I did. But it's it's something you never see. It, it, it could be because it's a horrible idea. I could see that. could be the worst idea. But who wouldn't? To me, to actually be able to go and you see 20 people on the skate floor, a particular lobby, you can choose what type of lobby you go to, what kind of skating rink you go to, and you see people out there competing against yeah. other groups. I don't think, I don't think it's a bad idea. Is, you know? Yeah. I, I, I think this is a perfect pick. This is a perfect pick because the only way this game possibly gets made <laughs> is if Beastly <laughs> made it happen. <laughs> I just... I, what I like the fact is your optimism that there'd be multiple servers of people playing this. You know it would be one server. <laughs> you sack you, of shit. Waiting for some Bye. people to join, just standing alone by your speakers blaring generic synth unlicensed music, which was safe to play. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be MIDI like the old school ringtones. Yeah. It'd just be MIDI. exactly like being in a current skating rink. Skating rink. <laughs> I'm just, I'm saying this. Like, you have like disco night and VR and I could get That's drunk and do this. Night. That'd be fun. Yeah, adult night, every, every, all your avatars get old. Come on, man. You, you gotta, you gotta think. You gotta use your imagination. Again, it's, it's not, I can't it's wait not for the, the, the sequel, Public Pool Simulator. Yeah. <laughs> Who's, who's going to go yeah, on the right? 12 foot tonight? Basically, man, I love you. It's not that the game's bad. It's that you had infinite scope and possibility. And it's like you asked for a sandwich. That's kind of the equivalent of what you <laughs> it's, it's, it was the like, best sandwich I could think of. Uh, but in, in this in this actual post, in this question, uh, they asked, what about games as a service or, you know, single player epic or FPS? And I was thinking, what if we could have just a PlayStation or Xbox service, kind of like what Xbox is doing now with the Xbox, uh, their little gaming service, which is similar to Netflix. But what if PlayStation or one of these huge companies allowed you to pay $200, $250 per year to get every single game, all the new stuff, everything that's, that comes out? I mean, would you guys pay $300 a year to Sony or to yeah. an, another yeah. company if every game that came out, even the new releases like Netflix came out and you had it? Would you guys do it? Uh, it really depends on pricing, and it depends on platform. Like, if it were three hundred dollars on Xbox and three hundred dollars on PlayStation, PlayStation maybe, probably not at three hundred dollars. Honestly, on Xbox, no fucking way. Okay, because they they just don't have enough new releases that interest me. So yeah, it really it's... depend on pricing. Like, if Steam did it for three hundred dollars a year, I'd be like, yeah, goddamn yeah, because there's so many fucking games that come out every day on Steam that if I had no worry about money because I was already paying like a monthly fee to play everything, then I'd be checking out all sorts of shit on Steam. I, VR I honestly, alone, I could spend $300 a year. Yeah, you sure can. <laughs> I honestly believe, Brian, that this is that this is the direction that, that we're going to go. Uh, we kind of see how the Netflix model destroyed not the previously. If, not, if, uh, the publishers, prices aren't right. not if publishers can help it, man. They don't want this. The music industry didn't want it. The music, The movie industry doesn't want it. They, yeah. and developers, if developers can keep this from happening, they're gonna. Aren't they already trying it though with PlayStation Now? <clears throat> uh, that's that's older stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, but yeah. it's heading in that direction in a sense. And, and like, Xbox has a very. Dude, similar... I would fucking pounce all over that shit. Three hundred dollars a year, and if I could also share that account with Sam, maybe like you know how you can with games now. Like if, mm -hmm. dude, that'd be a no brainer for me. Because you got to think, man. If me and Sam are getting a game, that's one hundred and twenty bucks. 
if we both got to get it. You know yeah, what I mean? So uh, it's 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 actually not Wilson now. You know, Kate has her PS4 right there. My pros here. Every right, time I, I do the my, same thing. Yeah, you game share. You don't. Yeah, have to... you do. But like, just saying in general, like if I could, if I could still game share, it would hundred percent no brainer. I spend more than three hundred dollars a year on games yeah. on PlayStation. Yeah, no problem. Put it like too. that. Three hundred dollars doesn't sound unreasonable. Three hundred. Yeah, and if, that's six especially games. if you could share with when your you family, down, I mean, like, what is that? Fifteen dollars a month, something like that. Not a lot. Not a lot. Even, I can't even, math. Barely even just one person, if you think three hundred dollars is is really just not a huge amount of money, like 20, even if it's just for you, maybe like twenty two dollars a month, that's yeah. it's pennies for the games. I mean, I, if it was a subscription service, I wouldn't be surprised if it was more five six hundred oh, minimum would have to be something easily. near there. If not mean, I've cancelled, I've had things and cancelled them before, like. Like I said, like if Xbox was doing this right now, there's no way I would sign up for the Xbox version because they just don't have the, they don't, they're not compelling enough to me, as far as the exclusives go. And if I already had it on PlayStation, then I would yeah, just it's... do the PlayStation version. And frankly, I don't know that I do the PlayStation version either because I don't know what's PlayStation got for exclusives right now that I'm really interested in. God of War three, I think that's the only, or God of War Dad Edition. That's the only one I could really think of. Dad of War, I don't really. I don't really look at it as exclusives like okay so if i had to pledge to one or the other yes the first thing i'd look at was exclusives but like i would just look at which one has an overall potentially more interesting library because even if i only even if i only did playstation for one year and i got caught up on all the games and everything and was literally caught up i could do I could switch over to Xbox for the next year, get through that, and then at that point, like you're pretty much all caught up with games. I mean, I feel like it would probably only last me a year, maybe two, before I'd be like, at this point, they're not creating. I think that would look be more of a back catalogist dream. Yeah, hell yeah, it would. Or just sign up during the holiday season, <laughs> you know, yes. for for like October, November. Just sign up for two months, play all the games that come out in the holiday season, and you're done. It's Sixty bucks, yeah, and you'd be good to go. Yeah. yeah. Twelve month contracts, man, or twenty four month contracts. They get you with that shit. You know, it'll be a twenty four month contract. Mm. It'd lock you down. Now, the only I I, I get it. <laughs> you cancel it. The only for me, the only subscription I've never cancelled is that that Pornhub Premium, man. The 1080p is worth it. You know, seven twenty. Haven't done four K yet. No, I think that's that's a. You don't want to see that shit in 4K, Wilson. Things are. I kind of do. Things are do. revealed. <laughs> More like, a, a, <laughs> like what, Ryan? What's revealed? I don't want to talk about it a, in public. A science <laughs> project. Really, you know. This is a family show, Beasley. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Has anybody done VR porn? Yes. Uh, actually, I don't have VR. Like many times. Wow, I totally just admitted that if I had VR that I'd try it out. That's kind of well, fucked up. I actually tried, uh, Kate and I actually tried to view it. Yeah. Uh, and and we tried initially when the VR first came out because at that time everything was new, but there was some issue with the conversion of the type of file. Oh, and so I've never, it. unfortunately, wanna, I've never been able to see it. You don't want to do it on the PlayStation because the resolution splits, you'll be on 480p, and you're talking 480p in your eyes. It looks like... Um, it would look like there's Vaseline smeared onto your eyes, and then you're trying to look at the world. Hey, man, you. some people like kinky shit, Gary. It, on the Oculus and the other ones, it's still relatively convincing, except for the fact you feel like a tiny little human that's being descended upon by these gigantic creatures that are devouring your body. The perspectives still aren't correct. <laughs> Giant porn. It's like it. <laughs> it is. It is. If you ever want to feel like you know that you're wall. being savaged by a room of giant lady creatures, then. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's relatively convincing is what I'll say. But you, you really want to pay for the, the premium stuff. So what you're saying is the scaling's not there. They need to really work down the, the scaling. It, Perspective-wise, yeah. Because, Perspective. again, you're looking at a screen, and if something moves close to the screen, it's just like just a giant head near you. It's kind of that sort of thing, yeah. <laughs> well, unsettling. It is, it. yeah. It's, it's early days of it. But as I said, if you've got it, you know that's that that headset's not doing much else for you except going on Google Earth and looking at ass. That's kind of the two staples of the VR headset right now. <laughs> that's what that's what's made it remotely successful is like remote if I, viewing if I was, pornography. If I was selling them in Best Buy right now, it would be like right, you can do two things with this: Google Earth <laughs> and ass. I can show you Google Earth, but you'll have to bring it home to do the ass. <laughs> right. <laughs> You There's can look at it. Can go down oh, I'm left, walking right. away. I'm walking away. You deal with that in. in best you got a private room in the back <laughs> <laughs> with a red curtain and a red light. Go ahead Little and check this out. Wet wet wipes on a PVC chair in there as well. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> I, could, I could probably <laughs> shift some Oculus Rift headsets actually with that sales approach. That's pretty good. With that voice, you could shift just about anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah man. I'm kind of wanting to buy one right now with you just talking about it. <laughs> the PVC chair sold me. <laughs> One hundred dollars of kink. I'll take two. Oh shit! <laughs> All right, guys. I think that ends it as far as our topics. You guys want to pimp out anything this week? Yes, the goddamn podcast that we didn't pimp out last week. Oh. Um, we actually hit over a hundred followers this week, so happy days. On Podbean, we have over a hundred <laughs> followers, so that's good news iTunes, we need reviews. It, it's embarrassing that I'm the only reviewer on iTunes. <laughs> Every week I look at it. Every week it makes me sad. Let's if go. Let's go write place. some reviews on the iTunes one. Just making fun of Gary. That's <laughs> just like directly referencing Gary's review. Please do. <laughs> Please do. Let's if do that. Actually, if you've ever used your Oculus Rift or your HTC Vive for looking at ladies or men on the internet. Um, give us a review on that and put it on our podcast. We don't really care what you're reviewing. Um, as long as you're reviewing something, tell us about all the times BC was wrong. Because I think there was five or six hashtag opportunities on this podcast. The yeah. ice, ro- the ice skating, or sorry, the roller roller rink was was one. But yeah, for me, it was a good idea. You know, again, what, BC, it's, it's... you got to check out Game Room on uh, on the on the Vive. It's a VR game that it doesn't have roller skating, but it has the same social kind of atmosphere and experience that you're it's called what now game room gary you played game room right yes yeah i'm sorry gary go ahead start pimping that podcast again well as i said we've we've we get over like 500 uh people a week that will download our podcast or listen to our podcast sorry download is is much more um from various sources audio only and we have no reviews so if you're one of the 500 plus that are downloading it one of the 1500 that are streaming it just you know Give us a five-star review if you think we're worth it. Um, put some words in there. Is it does make all the difference to us. I mean, we it joke really a lot. Does, but guys. It, it really does, guys. I think it's actually a grow. different 500 every week because every time somebody new, somebody new listens to it, they're like, oh, my God. <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> it it, it yeah. is a, a high turnover attrition. And we've, we've actually, actually got gained. awesome SEO, but you know terrible, <laughs> terrible repeat viewership. <laughs> I'm going to do a callback. I'm going to do a callback to our Chilean listener. Um, who, if you remember, we had one listener from Chile. Well, they've told their friends because we're up to four. Four so we're Chileans. Growing in Chile. Nice. 400% growth in Chile. We love you, Chile. I'll just let you know, too, that if Huge you leave a funny Chile. one, we might we might read them on the podcast. You never know. Yeah. We might Ooh, get your funny fun review. Thing to do. That'd be a this, fun. Will yeah. defi- this will definitely happen again, guys, so stay tuned. But in the meantime, send your topics for consideration. To revolvergamescast at gmail.com. It's or revolver feedback. Ga- if you just want to add something. Yeah, to, ask questions. Add something to the show. You revolver Games. If you want to talk about how wrong Beastly was. Then Every day. Let us know. Let us know. And where can where can they find you, Beastly? <laughs> let's let's uh, do the round table here. Shouts. Where can they find me? Find they you, can find me on YouTube at Beastly Gamer. I'm there every day. If you guys would like to talk to me and find out what I'm doing, or on Twitter at Beastly underscore underscore Gamer, so you guys can find me there as well. Wilson? Rest you. Whoa, whoa! We all just like whoa. pointed at each other here. <laughs> I, if you want to find me and talk to me on Twitter, I'm at Ryu Wilson. You can tweet me all sorts of funny shit. If you want to talk about aliens or government conspiracies or go make fun of NASA, I am down. Yeah, we gotta have a. Re- we need to have a conversation. We're on the same page, mm. Ryu Wilson. I know what's going on. Got you. Mm-hmm. I'm reading between the lines, man. You're awake. You're awake. You're, re- you're red pilled for sure. Uh, mm-hmm. I can tell. Mm-hmm. Once you swallow that shit, can't go back, man. That blue just doesn't can't do it anymore. Mm. Jesus. I don't know. I it's really like, like those blue pills, though, man. The wife does, too. It's, it's like Cypher, man. The blue ones. <laughs> the wife does, too. <laughs> those blue pills, man. They're underrated. It's like, no, for every the love time, of God, take the blue one. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to be honest. Every time I bring the blue pills home, the wife hides them. So I think we're on different pages there. <laughs> she, she definitely doesn't like them. Oh, shit. Where can they find you, Briar? Uh, I'm all over the place. So you can find me on YouTube. You can find me streaming on Twitch. You can find me on Twitter at the Briar Rabbit. Uh, but most of all, you can find me trying to figure out how to put porn on my VR headset. We'll do it together, Briar. Right. We'll do a step by step video. Revolver will do a step by step guide to that. Expect it on the channel soon. <laughs> that, that is a step by step. That's the first content I'm willing to to, to drop. Um, <laughs> to load porn on your VR headset. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. Viagra. Um, I was talking about Viagra. That's yeah. the blue pill I was talking about. 
Uh, there must be some young people in the comments. Sorry, Gary. So I, I've interrupted you like ten times in the last like fifteen it's, seconds. It's not a problem. I like it. I like the dynamic here. We're all we're all engaged and we're all active to talk, and that's the main thing. That's my classroom teacher. There. You know, you're talking because you're interested. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so myself, Gary Diaz, 86, pretty much everywhere. Um, find me on PlayStation, Steam, Battle.net, Twitter. Um, not YouTube, though, because fuck that minefield. I'm not even getting involved. Um, <laughs> You're a smart so, guy, man. You're very smart. Oh, minefield is perfect. Not touching it at all. But honestly, if you want to touch my heart, then send feedback into revolvergamescast at gmail.com. Leave reviews on our iTunes, on our Podbean, or comments on the bottom of this YouTube video if you're watching it on YouTube. We engage with all of that. We talk through all of it. It helps us inform the show, helps us get closer to you as a community, makes us smile. Um, and like I said, if, if the Viagra is hidden, it gets us hard. So <laughs> say what you can. That's smiling. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next week. Peace.